Hello, everybody. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Transatlantic Rebels podcast. My name is Jessel, and my co-host is Rochard. This week, we're going to be talking about Lupe Fiasco. Lupe Fiasco. Lupe Fiasco. Okay, so this week, ladies and gentlemen, Rashad and myself will be talking about one of our favourite rappers. His name is Lupe Fiasco. So this will just be a general discussion on various aspects of his artistry, albums, this, that and the other. In fact, just before the podcast, we were getting carried away with the discussion, which will just fill you in Star Wars style mid-discussion. So basically, uh, Kendrick Lamar is about to drop his um, his third, I mean, you could argue whether it's third or fourth, but I'm going to call it his third album. And uh, I was kind of saying, well, listen, when was the last time an album, uh, an artist actually released three straight classics as their first three albums? And we were kind of sitting there racking our brains, basically. And, and actually, this applies to Lupe, we think, because you've got <laughs> you've got Food and Liquor, The Cool, and then after that, the album that won't be named. So uh, <laughs> I, I will go so far as to say two albums that won't be named, but we'll get to that. <laughs> okay. Um, but it's it's an interesting discussion, so think about that for yourself. Ruminate, if you will. And um, but yeah, we, we've always wanted to talk about Lupe. This is a particularly fascinating year for Lupe himself. He's in the midst of releasing three albums, uh, or so he claims. He's already released one of them, at least. So yeah, um, yeah. So uh, <laughs> I love that voice of yours. You're like, yeah. <laughs> Don't give it all away, man. You've I'm got to, sorry. Like, I'm sorry. Get some suspense to I'm, ter- I'm terrible at poker. I'm terrible at poker. Sorry. But we need to do that. <laughs> I- I'll make my attempt. All right. Okay. So, I mean, what were your first um, experiences with Lupe? I guess the first one, I guess you could say, would be a Touch the Sky by Kanye and the whole thing with the loop and the third stuff. And then I was like, okay, he sounded pretty nice on there. And I, I still kind of held my breath. People like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. And then he started getting all these cosigns from like Jay Z and all people all over the place. Like, I never see so many people give a cosign to an artist that I never heard of. Uh, so I guess you could say um, Touch the Sky was my first experience with him. And then um, Food and Liquor came out, and then the rest was kind of like history for me right there. Yeah, I think it's pretty similar in a way, actually. Um, yeah, I think it was Touch the Sky was probably my first. Actually, do you know what? It wasn't. It was um, the. <laughs> There was a, a kind of one-hit wonder group called The Rain, T H A and then R A Y N E, and they had a they had a song called "Didn't You Know," and it was really dope. I think it was Rich Harrison who did like "Crazy in Love" by Beyonce and "One Thing" by A Marie. I think he, and uh, like other A Marie songs. Um, I think he did that beat, which was his very kind of signature sort of crisp percussion go go beat kind of thingy ish. It was a dope song anyway. I used to DJ it, had it on vinyl, all that kind of shit. And um, there was a remix featuring Joe Budden, who broke out in 2003, and Lupe Fiasco. Um, so I think that was my first experience of him. But it was probably kind of quite cursory. I didn't really, you know, think, oh, look up this guy, blah, blah, blah. And then he came back in 2005, which was Kanye's album. Uh, and he featured on Touch the Sky, got in the video, all that kind of stuff. And then I think it was after that I went and downloaded all his mixtapes because he had... Oh, yeah. Fahrenheit, the Fahrenheit series. Yeah, so Fahrenheit um, yeah. part one, two, and three. So I listened to all of them just once and I was kind of like, okay, this guy's clearly pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> clearly pretty good. And, <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. And um, But then... Then it gets interesting. Maybe maybe my story dovetails a little bit from you. Okay. So, okay, you got Food and Liquor. And, however, the thing is, is that the Food and Liquor that was released to retail was actually pretty wildly different from the Food and Liquor that Lupe made originally. Okay. Now, I, I managed... Someone gave me uh, a copy of that original Food and Liquor. Okay. And um, I think I still have it, actually. Oh, you do? Some, yeah, yeah. And I have to say, I mean, I absolutely played the shit out of that. Absolutely, like for months, 
months. This because this is months before the real food and liquor was released. Okay. Uh-huh. Actually, do you know what? I'm I'm actually going to call the real food and liquor the original one, the, the leaked version. Okay. Because because the the retail version. It took me a long time to get used to that version. That's how much I'd ingrained, like, you know, the, the original version. Okay. And, and it's just, wow. So, I mean, I, did you ever hear the original version? No, you gotta... Uh, if, is, there some way, is there some way you can get it to me? I'll get it to you, man. Okay. Um, it, it may well change your entire reading of Food and Liquor, though. It, I'm not joking. It probably took me it probably took me three months of repeated listening to actually get used to food and liquor, the retail version. I don't know if there's any listeners out there who had a similar experience, like pro- maybe, you know, um, but yeah, so, so it, it was actually pretty different. I reckon like half the album was quite similar. You know, you still had songs like sunshine and things like that, but um, if I think that was the first song on it, actually, can you keep, can, do, you, do, you, do you have a track list on you? I'll, I'll look for the track list. Do you okay. know what I might, I know I've got a, I've, not, I've got a copy of my car for some reason actually. That's it's the same copy from like <laughs> eleven years ago that's just sitting in my car. Um, I, I'll get that. I'll get all that. But yeah, about half the album is the same, and half the album is completely different. And it, it's not really much of a surprise to look and see which tracks are different because a lot of them have <laughs> have kind of just jay-z on them or whatever or this or that like they kind of the very obviously like pharrell i got you that wasn't there um the pressure jay-z one wasn't there i think kick push two wasn't there there's quite a few that that basically got like i don't want to say shoehorned into the original because they didn't it was just it was so wildly different the feel of it it was it was just incredible it was so much it was so much warmer I, I think there was a song if i remember correctly it had like a marvin gay sample in it or something like that i can't remember but like a real kind of soulful thing not like just a kanye beat of that era but just genuinely it was just like wow um man you gotta listen to it <laughs> i think daydream daydreaming wasn't on it either okay so it was kind of these ones with bigger guests like jay-z pharrell and jill scott those ones weren't on the original okay um wildly different wildly different so yeah so that was my kind of original thing so i really was listening to that like day in day out i just absorbed it completely and then on what was it september the 19th 2006 after many many delays um lupe fiasco's food and liquor was released officially and that was a different version yeah definitely so what were your thoughts on that album then i will say when I heard, first heard the um, the song, real I liked. So I, I played it. Did you have an intro? And he has that long ass intro with his with uh, with his uh, cousin or his sister, I guess, doing that little quote, uh, the 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 street poetry. And I heard real and real was good. But then when just might be okay came in, I was like, holy shit! So like for 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 me, real was kind of like a warm up. Like okay, this is a pretty good song. And then when Just Might Be Okay came in, that's when I I, I didn't get, I couldn't get past that song first. I played that song like maybe like four or five times before I even got to Kick Push. Because, I, I, cause, cause of course, Kick Push came out as a symbol, single. And every, and I loved that song. And I, I'm pretty sure most people who heard it loved it. But when I heard Just Might Be Okay and how he was like so much dexterity when it came into there. I like mean, Black Fix on a battery set me, that slept on me on. I was like, what the fuck is going on here? And you're getting so hyped up because you like you can see him like in his room practicing his shit, getting ready to go out there and kind of show his best. I'm like, usually sometimes those songs are corny, but he's made it like feel like you could like like you could be a rapper and just get in your room and in the mirror and start practicing and getting up there and people talking shit about you and you getting outside like yeah I could do this shit. Like I couldn't believe that crap. It was unbelievable. And the thing about the album was um, the production was so different from um, from most of of, of, of hip hop out there. I mean, of course, of course, like I'm pretty sure underground stuff like that, they still had similar, similar. But as far as like stuff that was out at that point right now, it was kind of like refreshing because it was, it was still hip hop, but it kind of fit into the the, the persona Lupe, Lupe was selling, like the nerd geek guy, kind of like that situation, like that song I Gotcha, the one with Pharrell. It's like it's, it's like that, it's that it's geeky, but it's cool geek. It's not corny geek, if I could, if, if I can say that. The instrumental, I think, who did that? Um, Mike Shinoda from uh, from uh, Lincoln Park helped him out with that one. Um, I mean, we can we can go back and forth. I don't want to hog up the the first initial shot, but I think from just might be okay to the end of it, except for that fifteen minute long ass outro, 
which I which I cut out of my track list, basically. Oh god. <laughs> if you take that out and kick push the last part of the album, I think it's 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 for me personally, it's 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 one of the few tens I would give. As far as like as far as like there's nothing there's no, there's no thing as a perfect ten. There's no such thing as a perfect album. I'm talking about like I don't script, I don't think I script any track on this song. When I pop this in, if I'm ready if I'm going jogging or I'm driving my car or something like that, and like I have time to listen to it, I have an hour I'm, like I'm going somewhere, I will not skip any track on this album. So that's just how it is for me. We can, I can go into detail a bit more later, but that's my initial impression for the album. Yeah, I mean I kind of alluded to my initial reactions <laughs> to the retail version. Um it, it is wildly different. Um yeah, so so basically the original. I'll just briefly. I don't want to labour it too much because I think I, I would basically recommend any listener who hasn't heard the original version to just go cop it. However, you can basically. So it kicks. It kicks off with. Um, there are kind of alternate track names and stuff like that, but but there are similar songs and stuff. So it kicks off with a kind of theme music to a drive by or something, and then it goes. The second song is um, "Sunshine." Uh, it's basically the same version. We, and it was such a beautiful way to open up the album. I have to admit that that's what it was actually one of my favorite songs. And I did this, I did a mixtape. I think it was actually before the album released. So I was doing a DJ mixtape, and the last song I put was Lupe Sunshine, and that was before the album even dropped because I I knew the original version so much, and everyone was always like, "This is the greatest song." Blah blah blah. Ghetto Story. That I think that's the one which I was kind of talking about, where it's kind of got like a proper sort of seventies kind of beat to it, um, and. and that was dope. That was absolutely. Dope. I think there's a level. There's a level of detail in the story storytelling on this where it's kind of almost not allowed. It's more on the retail version. It's more about features. It's more about being clever, about being being intricate and wordplay. And I, it's not as pure storytelling as as it is on the on the original version. Um, then there's something I think it spaz out. Uh, yeah, that's quite a kind of like. Yeah, I know that one. Yeah, uh, and then just might be okay. I think it's the same. Uh, trials and tribulations. I think trials and tribulations is basically pressure, but okay. um, it, with slightly alternate verses and obviously no Jay Z. Um, no, e- no eagle sound. Uh, no eagles. No who? No eagle sound. Wah. You know that eagle sound that opens up in the beginning of pressure. No. No, I think it has that. Yeah, the eagle has the eagle sound on it too. Yeah, I think it has everything. Okay. From from memory. Yeah, I think so. Mm. Um, because also, but you got to remember this. I don't think this was kind of they were worried about samples at this point because this this was this far in advance of the actual uh, release of it, so you didn't really have to worry about samples. Mm. Um, then after that, what is it? Make sure. Um, real recognized, real. I love that song. Oh man, there's some memories actually. Hustler's song, that hustler song was dope. Um, Never Lies, which is called instrumental on, on the real on the retail version. Um, also, it was kind of it was a lot more interesting the the actual sequencing of, of the original version. I have to say, I, I don't. I always had a lot of issues with how it was sequenced the retail version. Then what was it? No place, no place to go, which has hurt me soul. Um, game time, yeah, that was a good one. Kick push, kick push being near the end of the album instead was much nicer. Uh, and then slow down, and the last song was uh, American Terrorist. It was, I think it's called Close Your Mind, but I, it could, you know, you just don't know. But it's basically American Terrorist, Terrorist, which I think is one of the best songs he ever recorded, <laughs> like even to this day. You know, um, oh man. Do you know what? It was just so much purer, more rounded. It, it felt more like Lupe himself. It was, I don't know. I feel like I feel like Food and Liquor, the retail version, got hijacked massively. I think it got hijacked. <laughs> and, and it's funny because actually, what? a song like I Gotcha, it did. I Gotcha, I hated that song. I what? absolutely hit me. Wait, 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 wait. I hated it for a long time. Probably, probably a couple of months. Yeah, I was just like, every time it would just play on the album, I was like, fuck this shit. <laughs> it's just like, I hated it. I, I, I resented it being there because I was kind of like, okay, I know I love Pharrell, he's hot, blah, 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 blah. But it just felt shoehorned into the album. It did not flow like the original flowed. It just did not. And then 
after a long, long time of repeat listening, I was kind of like, okay, I started just to accept it, forget the old version, and just like the retail version for what it was. Uh-huh. Um, I still think it's inferior. However, it's 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 still a great album. It's absolutely great. But I think it's not it's got it's not got as hot, uh, much heart and soul. It doesn't feel like as much of a true debut as the other one did. Um, so I don't know. But I, I've still got a lot of affection for it. But I think I took to the next album more as a result um, because that was unsullied by by any leaks or anything like that, basically. So it's funny, isn't it? It's funny how a leak can just alter your complete perception of everything. I like see. when we were talking about in that Fiona Apple, yeah, like that Fiona Apple thing we were talking yeah. about, her, her, you know, that album. And um, if you haven't checked that out, we did a, a podcast on Fiona Apple and a similar kind of situation to that yeah. one. <laughs> Mike Elizondo. Um so yeah, yeah. I, I, do you know what? I, I realise. I, I wonder if I bet there are a lot of listeners out there who <laughs> felt the same. I bet there are. I bet there are. They kind. I bet they're kind of like shit. This brings back memories. Get in touch. <laughs> T underscore rebels on Twitter, or we've got the Facebook page. Just get in touch. Honestly. <laughs> wow. I know a lot of people who are listening to this who are like, "What the hell's going on here?" <laughs> Because there's people I know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. That's fine. But if they, if, <laughs> if they can back it up, yeah. If they can back it up with real knowledge of the original version, and they still see, but you're you're holding no you hold, you hold them at a deficit though, because that's not the album that they, they got put out. Like, it's, it, if you look, I, as a matter of fact, as you were, as you, while you were talking, I'm going on there. I'm on, I'm on the internet, and I'm looking for the original version. There's no there's nowhere to be found. So you can't. It's like oh, shit. You, you, you're holding them against it. Like it's not like they can go find it magically. They can't find it. I'm going on, I'm it's in my car, everyone. It's in my car. There you go. See, it, so 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 you should open up. You should open, how about this? I'll open up a transatlantic sitting in my car. Open up a transatlantic transatlantic rebels email, and then you send it there, and then you get like whatever. But we can't do that because that's against the law. But I'm just no, saying. No, no. I'm just saying. Here's what I'm saying. You can't hold that against people. That's the album that got put out to the masses. There's many people who swear by that album. They swear by it. like, and I, and I will defend you. Like, if that's if that album, if that version is superior, then it's superior. But with that being said, there are many people who haven't heard that original version who swears by this version. And there's a lot of the memories that people take with this album. There's a lot of people that swear by Lupe with this album and the second album. And they and they and they, would, and they would be like, what the fuck is he talking about? Even though, <laughs> even though you're probably right. That's that's almost that's almost you know. Let me get let me get real right now. For for, for for Lupe fans that don't know about the background shit, like the like 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 the leaks and stuff like that, and don't know about the Fahrenheit and stuff like that, the ones that only follow him through the retail stuff, which is fair because most people don't really go crate digging that much. I mean that's the average that's the average fan anyway. They only know about Lupe's like uh like official releases. So basically they're gonna be like, What? Are you kidding me? They like you you just see like you even I wonder is, is your, the Steve the Steve Flash you want to listen to our our, our podcast? Does he listen to it? You know, I'm not sure. Okay, not, maybe, I, maybe not. I'm, I'm amused because if you see his reviews about Lupe's first two albums, oh my god, I want to I want to hear his opinion on that. I'll be I'll be amazed by his opinion on that. that what you just said right there. <laughs> see, Lu- Lupe at the time was really pissed off. Yeah. Now I don't know if it was just pretend indignant rage because you know he was this was his debut on an a on, on a label or whatever, but. I don't know. Uh, I I would love to know his thoughts privately. Put it that way. I don't know if he's ever posited them out in the media or anything like that. God knows he doesn't trust anyone. But you know, I would love to know what he thinks of the original version versus the version that got released. I'll give you that one. I'll give you that. But regardless, no, now regardless of what got him to what stage, and you know, doing features with Jay and Pharrell and Jill Scott and blah 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 blah, that's different. If you're talking about the purity of what the album was versus what ended up in the retail, then I would love to know his thoughts. Yeah, and and if, <laughs> if he disagrees with me, then there's something wrong with him, basically, <laughs> because it is so pure. It's pure. Mm-hmm. So pure. Now, now listen, you're absolutely right that most people haven't heard that version, yeah? Yes. I think the vast majority of people although, have although, that. although, although, Although I'd be surprised. It was widely leaked. That was leaked like a motherfucker. I mean, there's got to be hundreds of thousands of people that heard that original version. I didn't even know there was a leaked version. That's how, that's, that's how unknown it was. I didn't even know there was a leaked version. You're, 
I, I knew I knew he had he had tracks that were like stuff like for a height he had some stuff that was like another version of another song and stuff like that. And you had like those occasional like like remixes or a song that sounds different but the same lyrics and stuff like that. But I never knew there was a full on leak of food and liquor. I never knew that at all. Yep. Do you know what the funny thing is as well? I wonder when I got this leak because I don't think there's any way of telling now. Um, but I'm pretty sure it was near the beginning of that year. Um, so you, so I'm from memory. It was literally beginning of 2006. So for two, so for almost like what eight nine months maybe something like that. I reckon it was something crazy like that because I just bumped it constantly, constantly. Yeah. I gotta hear it. I don't know. I don't know. All right. Yeah, yeah. But but honestly, if <laughs> listeners, if you think I'm completely crazy or <laughs> ruining your life or female <laughs> ghostbustering everything, um, then just you know hit me up on Twitter, Facebook, T underscore Rebels or T Rebels on Facebook, uh-huh. Tran- uh, Transatlantic Rebels on Facebook. Mm. Honestly, let us know because I can't be the only person who feels this way. I cannot. I refuse to accept that. <laughs> I'm expecting yeah. feedback from Lupe himself. Put it that way. Yeah. I want to know. I want to know. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Many people call it out in the class. And you just Do you know what it's like? Do you know what it's like? It's it's kind of like... It, it's like Kanye West. Okay. Kanye West, a college dropout. Now, that, that was another album that kept getting pushed back. Yeah. Okay. Now, did you ever hear the original versions of... All falls down and Jesus walks. Here's the thing with Kanye and Lupe. I'm a bigger Lupe fan than I'm a bigger I'm a Kanye fan. Like I like Kanye. I appreciate Kanye. I love Re- Late Registration. That's probably my favorite album of his. But I've never been like like a like a like a Kanye worshiper. So a lot of that stuff might have passed by me. Okay, so there were original versions of Jesus walks and All Falls Down. Now All Falls Down had to get re-recorded because Lauren basically she didn't want her voice on there okay fair enough so he had to get selena johnson in and and then he redid everything and stuff and remastered it blah 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 but his whole delivery is different and jesus walks same sort of thing yeah that was amped up a lot more for the actual uh, the the end version but the original versions of those two songs my god they are so much more soulful so much there's no fucking auto-tune and shit like that (laughs) there's no vocoders there's no this there's no that it's just it's so real, and that's exactly what this was like. Basically, okay. so very similar circumstances, you know. Now, again, Jesus Walks was another track. It took me a long time to like the uh, the actual end result one that was on College Dropout because I knew the original just it was absolutely off by heart. Yeah, I mean, obviously it was still still the same words and stuff, but the feel of it completely different. And that's what it's like. That's what it's like with Lupe's Food and Liquor. <laughs> For me, it's always going to be that split alternate reality, that sliding door wow. shit, basically. I can hear hearts breaking all across the listenership, man. I can hear it right now. Or, or you could, or you can, or you can hear the odd one here or there. He's like, "Yes, I agree. Yes, <laughs> Jessel. Finally, someone committed to a podcast." Man, I didn't know. This, I didn't know the podcast would go this route. Wow, I didn't know it was going to go this one. I thought we have like a gush fest. Jesus. <laughs> You never know what you're gonna get, huh? Yeah, you never yeah. know. Yeah, like Forrest Gump said, "Life's like the buying chocolates, right?" There you go. Okay, do you know what? So, so before before I get like floods of hate mail and stuff like that. So, okay, the retail <laughs> version. Yeah, uh-huh. um, the retail version. I do uh, absolutely like it. Stroke love it. I reckon. Um, but it's only like stroke love. Okay, so I got gotcha. you. I ended up liking that track. Uh, Daydreaming. Ended up liking it. The video was cool as well. It was fun. Well, I get what you're saying about Lupe's kind of geek chic sort of thing. Um, I mean, it's funny because he was kind of a street rapper before that, if anything, really, like back in the day. And and then he kind of, he pivoted into this. So uh, I never know quite why he did. Maybe it was just... I got I mean, theory. What do you think? Here's my thing. Okay. Because this gets into the next two albums and then it comes into the, the Drogas album. I got a theory about Lupe. There's, 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 there's a schizophrenia in Lupe, and um, I believe I might get in trouble for this one. I believe that Lupe is is one is 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 is, is a top tier lyricist and top tier rapper. That's there's no question about that. But I also believe that Lupe is also a businessman, but he has a bad habit of he can't he has a bad habit of reading his, read his audience sometimes when it comes to certain things. I feel like because. We'll get to that when we get to lasers, and we'll get to that when we get to drogas. But I just feel like 
Lupe adapts to different personas, but he, he seems to adapt at the wrong time when it happens. I think that's what happens with him. And he and then he doesn't commit to the he almost doesn't commit to the personas after a while because the whole thing with lasers will get the lasers. Um it kind of it, it kind of backfired a little bit because he says certain things about how the lasers thing went and it kind of like and when you look at it at the end of the day like it wasn't the way it's supposed to come out. So um I think there's I think there's a Lupe of food and liquor and cool. And then I think there's the businessman Lupe that when he, he he doesn't read the weather correctly and it kind of backfired against him. And he picked it back up like one album later on we'll get to. And then he kind of went right back into the other way. Track number 16, outro. 12 minutes and 13 seconds <laughs> of, hey, hey man, hey Tim Westwood, thanks for like being there for me. Hey, la di da di da. Yeah, yeah. We went to school together. I sat next to you in algebra. Yeah, yeah. Hey, blah blah. What the fuck is that shit? How are you going to commit that to a classic album? Now Kanye's college dropout. The last track on that. Yeah, last call. That's twelve minutes. Genius. Yeah, it's there for a reason. What is this shit? What is this shit? This is the most mixtapey, like. <laughs> Egg tweeting shit I've ever heard on a so-called classic album. It's, it's almost like yeah. he. It's almost like he forgot liner notes were there for a reason. <laughs> this is. Uh, wow. It goes back I don't to get it. If the, listen, listen. If this was like a hidden track, if this was like track number zero or something, yeah, and you had to rewind twelve minutes, absolutely fine. You go for it. That makes sense to me. But literally putting, I, I swear to God, I deleted this shit so much. Yeah, <laughs> I tried to scratch it out on the CD. You know, it was that. It was like, look, can I find the groove and just try and scratch it? Out? It was ridiculous, dreadful. What was that about? I don't know. I knew it. So after the first time I heard that, it, I tell you what, that was not on the original. That was not on the original. So who put that on there? Who? So who put that on there? Tell me about the record company because the record company is not going to ask you to put 14, 15 minutes of thank yous on a, on a thing. Come on now, really? Who put that on there? Only one. So who, per- yeah, who put only who, who one gone? person? The, the person who made lasers put that on there. Let's put it that way. We'll, we'll get back to that. Wait, later. Are, you t- are you talking about sun? Are you talking about sunken place, Lupe? <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. So okay. There's two Lupes, man. I'm telling you. There's 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 a technical there's a technical like master master lyricist, and then there's business Lupe who kind of has a bad habit of like of like making not reading the weather correctly when it comes to his fan base and what people want. So there's two different things, and a lot of it has to. Yeah. And, and, and I'll say this: a lot of it has to do with how how. How poor, how quote unquote poorly the, the cool sold compared to Luke Food and Liquor, which didn't sell as much as people thought it was going to sell. So he did a pivot, but well, I guess we can go and I guess if we want to go into the cool right now. We can kind of go back and forth with certain things. Yeah, 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 yeah. No problem. Okay. So uh, I, I I guess I can start it off. So for me, there's for for me personally, there's there's three Lupe albums for for me. For me, there's three. Albums. There's Food and Liquor. There's Tattoo on Youth, and then there's The Cool. And The Cool, depending on the, depending on what type of day I get out of bed, it's between Tattoo on Youth and The Cool, which is my favorite Lupe album. But I but I I'll probably argue, like, if there's seven days out of the week, I would say probably five days out of the week, it'll probably be The Cool for me, basically. I think this one opened up and didn't, and like, except for, okay, once he, once he did the, the he did the, uh, the, the sister doing the, the lyrics, the Speed for Today, which was good, which served the purpose of the album, the theme of the album. And then it goes into the free chili thing, which is okay. And then Go Go Gadget Flow, I think, opened way better than Real opened up um, uh, yep. Food and Liquor. Like, that was, like, off and running off the shot. I will say with this, I, 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 I'll start off with this, and I'll, go, I'll talk stuff to you. I think that... Next to Testimony and Youth, this is probably the most complex Lupe has ever been on something that's not a mixtape. Yeah, and uh, well, also I'd balance that with saying that it's not only the most complex, but it's also still accessible, and that's the yeah. difference. Yeah. This is what Lupe represented. He represented complex yet accessible. Yeah, and, and that's what this album is. Whereas I think Tetsu and Youth, <laughs> Jesus Christ, yes, 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 <laughs> that was for Lupe fans. I, 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 I feel like okay, yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll yeah. Get to that. We'll yeah. We'll get to that, but yeah, you're right. That was that was more kind of like payback for the fans for many years of being lost in Atlantic, as as the mixtape says. Yeah. Um, yeah, but the cool, yeah, that's flat out my favorite Lupe album, just no doubt, 
absolutely no doubt. It, you're right. It just kicks off. Go go gadget flow mental. The coolest. I think it's one of the best songs he's ever done. Yes, yes. We can talk about that for a. We, we, we can stay on. If that. you're talking about classic track number fours in hip hop history, this is one of them. <laughs> I will say this is one of the most epic songs I ever heard in any genre. This is so fucking yeah. epic. It's like so epic. I almost when I hear sometimes when I hear this when I hear this song, I almost wish. I mean, I'm thankful for the album the way it is. But sometimes I might. I almost wish. That he would just go fucking like Homer on this album and just to like a whole like all the tracks be like a whole epic story of like like Cole Young. I almost wish that, but at the end of the day, like I think he made the right choice and kind of like mixing it up and having like some songs kind of like like vaguely deal with the Michael Young saga and then kind of like do other details and stuff like that. But there's part of me I wish if there was any album I wish that was kind of like like kind of like split into two. I almost wish that one one half of it would be. Like everything that has to do with being cool, and then I wish the other the other disc would just be the whole Michael Young story. I think you can go for like you can go for like fifteen or sixteen tracks telling Michael Young stories. When I heard this one, I was like, God damn it! I could not get past this song. And when I said it just might be okay, I think I must have played this one like ten times. From from the from from that ominous rhythm and everything like that, and that even even at the end of it, when even at the outro, when it's still you still have the chorus doing that. Ooh, ooh. You, you almost want to play it again right after it. it's like holy shit let me go back oh my god it's like there's so much it's like so much like imagery and there's so much like detail and there's so much character in it man it's like it's, it's better than most of these fucking movies out right now if there was a coolest movie that would probably be better than most of these trash ass movies out right now but that's just me I completely agree this is the this is the track that I would put on repeat one just for uh, you know what not not hours days or it was just weeks I would put this song on for weeks on repeat one and that's not to the detriment of the rest of the album no no no, no, the rest no. Of the album. it's just there's something about it that spoke to me this song just something about it I just could not stop listening to it just ah. Oh. And it's really funny, you know what? Because there was actually a leak of this as well. There was a leak of the call, but it was just the real version. It just, it, it was, except it was edited. So it was the edited version. So actually, yeah, I, and I think it came out a good little while before, like probably, I don't know, back then it was probably like three weeks or something. Yeah, but oh, this song. And yeah, so basically I had the leaked version, but it was identical. It was just edited, heavily yeah. edited. Okay. Like, and, and so The Cool is one of these ones that I just knew the track off by heart, except it just cut out all the all the swear words. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the only thing that took me a while to readjust my brain was actually just the swear words. It was really funny. Um, but oh, I love that track. That is, if, there, if, if ever there's a 10 out of 10 track, then ah. that is it. <laughs> I just, I love that song. And then, but then the funny thing is, is that Superstar comes up straight after it. Yeah. And for me, I always kind of made the parallel between Superstar and If I Ruled the World. Okay. Like Nas. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, you've, you've got two sophomore albums and two breakout hits. Now, Superstar, I don't know how it went down in America. Oh, it's big. Here, oh my God, it was big. Yeah. It was big. Um, it actually went straight into the top, I think it's top three or top four in the UK. It was it's just huge, absolutely huge. And it was a massive hit here. I will say though, I will say though, my mom first heard this song. She was unimpressed by it. She thought it was a little bit lame. And this is her, her beginning of her calling him. She never called him Lupe Fiasco. You know what she called him? Do you guess? Loop. No, no, no. She called him Guadalupe. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I'm not trying to hear no Guadalupe. She's like, I'm not trying to hear it. I'm not trying to hear it. That is trolling, man. That is epic. <laughs> yeah. But I remember, I, I'll tell you what, we went, me and my friends went to a concert. This is when the cool was, when it, when the cool was out. We went to a concert. Yeah. And this is the closing song. The room is so fucking hot. And if you are what you say you are. I will say this. When Lupe did that, that concert, he came to Philly, Philadelphia. That's one of the, that's one of the best concerts I ever went to. Like he was on fire at that concert. Like it was like there's no yeah. like he he ruled the stage and he had um matter of fact he had gems he had he had Gemini gemstones on there too and he was good and he had Nicky Jean on the stage with him and stuff like that. He had the whole yeah. like FNF crew on there right there and he killed it, man. Like there was no well, he he did an acapella version of the cool the coolest. I was like what the fuck yeah man. But yeah, when Superstar came out, it was like. It was crazy, and the lyrics were crazy because, like, you—it's like a such—it sounds like a such a simple song, but you actually hear them, and you go to it. And at one part, at the at the when he starts with, with the microphone beam, 
And I'm like, holy shit! You're like, he's going all over the place, and it comes back. Whoo! I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? Jesus Christ! It's an amazing song. It's yeah. it's a, it's an absolute, and that's why I make the parallels between that and If I Ruled the World because they're both they've both got nice beats. They've both got epic choruses, yeah, that are actually quite simple sing songy choruses. Uh. But but they're still meaningful, and then the verses are just incredible, absolutely stunning. Like Nas and Lupe both just kill it, absolutely kill it. And you know what? It's funny. Uh, we might as well talk about it now. I went to the same concert, but in London, and it was a place called Somerset House, which was actually outdoors. So um, so it's in the middle of this beautiful kind of historic square. I mean, now it's kind of more offices, but okay, fine. Um, but it's it's just it was outdoors. The weather was brilliant and lupe you're right he was just so incredible he just ruled that state <laughs> you know it was like it was like watching kanye kind of thing is that level of not arrogance but just confidence and and like yeah he closed with superstar and that went on for like 12 minutes or something nuts he just went he just kept going and going and going and yeah that that was and it's funny because i actually took my wife to that and that was probably the first that was probably the first hip-hop concert she'd ever been to and um and it's funny because my memory is is amazing because the whole crowd it was probably about forty percent women. Now, typically at any rap gig in London, yeah, you're lucky if you've basically got ten women there, like in the whole fucking venue, pretty much. Like generally, it's going to be at least ninety percent men. But at Lupe's gig, it was amazing. It was such a nice balance, and everyone was really chilled. And Lupe was amazing. And oh, I will say though that the times kind of caught up to that because there are. Um as many women as guys at concerts right now in this age as yeah back yeah when. it's different now it's different though but you talk about a completely different era of music oh, yeah, you talk yeah. about since, since the drake era of music changed uh-huh. i mean it's completely completely changed now uh-huh. but but it was kanye and lupe those were guys with the, the kind of precursors to that drake forward era thinking in certain yeah. ways because they, they went beyond yeah. like the, like the streets in a way i was like okay let's do some let's, let's do other avenues of rap kind of thing like that like another perspective and then it finally, and then Drake. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, but also like Lupe. How many, how many times have you heard him on on wax disrespecting women? Not at all. I mean, unless, unless you want to talk about, unless you want to talk about the. the I can't really remember. Unless you want to talk about the controversy of uh, "Bitch Bad." Yeah, we, but that was more just people misunderstanding. Yeah, it, I think. yeah, yeah. I think. But uh, yeah, I mean, okay, yeah, there's slightly that, but that's pretty much it, really. Yeah. All right. And so, even that's that's really questionable. So, um, okay. So we got next. What's the next song? Oh, Paris, Tokyo. <laughs> Wherever I go, she goes. Every time I think about a girl I like, that song pops up in my head. That, that I mean, the lyrics are great. Don't get me wrong, but that that wherever I go, she goes just sums it up for me. That whole entire fucking song, even though the lyrics are fantastic and the grooves matter. It's like wherever I go, she goes. Wherever I go, she goes. It's just it's so silky, damn smooth. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me like of like a Tribe Called Quest era. Even though people got on, remember that? Remember when 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 people got on Lupe about not knowing Tribe Called Quest music songs? Yeah. And in my head, I'm like, you guys are. I want to go in my soapbox for a minute. I fucking hate that because I promise you, a lot of these people that are rap fans probably don't even know the classic half the time. I promise you that. Sometimes I don't even know half the shit. There there are, there there are there are are um are blind spots in my in my rap. In my rap um, history, all the time, like we were talking about a while ago, there's I don't know a lot of Common songs. There's Common's like a thing that I don't really know about, even though I get, even though I understand why he's big and whatever like that. There's all gonna be other things. So if Lupe is younger than, I don't know if he's how much younger he is than us, but he's, he's 35 now still. Yeah, so he's like a whole generation behind us. So yeah. my brother didn't know about my brother's like thirty four. He didn't know about he didn't grow up with uh with the new school and tribe called quest and stuff like that. Those guys were on their way out by the time they came up. My brother came up in like no limit. My brother came up at, during that time, so that's their whole entire sphere. So I think what happened with that was because Lupe was so great. There's like this there's like this there's like this unspoken rule where you have to know you have to you have to know the classic, otherwise you're not a true MC. You have to know every single classic that you ever walked the face of earth. And I guarantee you a lot of those guys probably don't even know half the shit that you know. They just play it by ear or whatever like that. But um I, I went off on a tangent. But it just sounds like even though Lupe wasn't really a follower of Tribe Call Quest, this sounds like a Tribe Call Quest kind of feel album, like, like that silky jazz kind of feel. Yeah, it absolutely does. It's a lovely song. Yes. I mean, in fact, I actually went at the beginning of that year in 2007. 
um, I actually went from London to Paris to Tokyo. <laughs> so, so I was like, damn. Um, so, yeah. It, it, it is one of these things where I, I don't understand. Like I've mentioned this on podcasts before. I, I don't know at what point rappers stopped thinking and aiming for like three or four singles and, and like a nice varied bunch of singles to try and get on the radio with. Because Lupe did it on the first album. He did it on this album. Probably you're talking more like two singles, really, in a, in a way. Uh, although Hip Hop Has Saved My Life got, got a pretty decent traction as well. Um, and Kanye used to put like standard four album, uh, four songs on every album that was proper singles and stuff like that. And somewhere in the last couple of years, or probably this decade, it's just stopped. It's absolutely stopped. Unless you talk about Drake. But yeah. I will say this to like, I will say this to I will say this about the coolness in, in America. After Superstar and after like the old hip hop heads got hyped for Dumb It Down, everything else just fell off. Like hip hop in my life barely made a register. It barely registered at all when it when it came out in America. Like for the Lupe fans. It was fans, a big it, album here, man. It was yeah. a big album here. Yeah. But over here it wasn't at all. Like after Superstar came out, okay, Dumb It Down came out and the, and the diehard fans were like, Yeah, he's spitting that shit. And then Superstar came out and everybody was like, okay, that's a, that's a nice, cool thing. And then, like, after that, the album just kind of, like, went, pretty much. I think it went, wow. I, for, some, for some reason, I feel like it went over the head. I, I think it was ahead of its time because I think it went over head because most people were still into Dipset and, and D-Unit and shit like that. So the, the mainstream fans were kind of like, okay, I don't know what to do with this. I would like my music hard-edged and, and kind of, like, in the streets and stuff like that. So they didn't know what to do with Lupe at that point. Lupe was almost like good for you music for those people, in a sense. Like, oh, everybody's telling me he's good. You know, sometimes you, you know, sometimes somebody tells you something so good, you just rebel against it. Like, I don't want to hear this shit. And I think that's how it was with Lupe. Everybody was saying Lupe was so great, yada yeah, yada. Yeah, yeah. And this is what leads into lasers when we get to that later on. But basically, it was like Lupe. I, don't, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. I think it was different. If I'm honest, like I, I don't even know just about America, but certainly it was here. Because Kanye and Lupe between them represented a massive sea change in music, a like, huge sea change. At, at that point, at that point, Fifty was on the way out for sure. You know, he had a, he had a big second album, definitely. But after that and G Unit, then it really started to nosedive quickly for him. You know, he he screwed up in that whole battle against Kanye for graduation and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then, I mean, Dipset and okay, that was fun club music, fun to ride to, but it wasn't anything like genre shifting. Oh, I agree it was on its way out, but I'm just saying, like at least in America, it was like the record shows, the, the sales showed Lupe made maybe like almost a, a third or maybe a little bit more than a third than what uh, Food and Liquor made in America. I don't know how it right. sold overseas, so at least in America, they weren't ready for that. I mean, maybe he was, I, I agree that he was influential and Drake picked up the picked up the baton. But at that point right there, it was like they people were still in that dipset G unit state of mind. They were still into that street club kind of shit. And Lupe, yeah. like, and like, I mean, maybe overseas it was a different story, but the sales did not show on for it at this point. Because I, I barely knew anybody who had the, the Food and Liquor album, except for people who actually were into rap that had it. And a lot of people were, and a lot of mainstream people into rap right now, they were like in a TRL phase still. It was like, okay, whatever's on MTV popping, let's get with that shit. Kind of like that. So I mean, at least that's what it was at that point in time. For, for well, I think I think the call has a lot of hooks on it. It has a lot. Nicky Jean comes up constantly. Matthew Santos is obviously there, but also you've got you've got two big singles that are, are crossable to ladies as well. You know, or, I mean, Superstar is universal. That was a massive hit here. Paris Tokyo is more of a kind of you know quote oh, unquote track. Dad did hit over here. Thing. Yeah, Paris right. Tokyo did hit over here. It kind of came and went. That one came and went over here too. Uh, I mean, it, it did okay here, you know, but it was it was a nice track. It kept up the momentum. Um, I mean, it's surprising that High Definition didn't get a proper single release because I love that song and it's got Snoop Dogg on it, who was hot at the time. Um, and, and base, but there's just hooks of plenty. But basically, you know what? Look, you and I are music obsessives or art obsessives. That's fine. Your average person. They still, to this day, will only buy an album. If, they, if there's a big single, they think, oh, wow, that's a big single. I like that. I'm going to go and buy the album. Yeah. And Lupe hit it with that because it had Superstar in there. I mean, it's funny because you mentioned Dumb It Down. Dumb It Down is the track that kind of got released in the, in the build-up. And actually, there was a lot of controversy about Dumb It Down because people thought it was shit. And, and <laughs> they absolutely did. They did. They absolutely did. Because if you took it out of the album structure and, and 
I remember talking with so many of my friends about this, and like some of them were like, "Oh my god, this is the worst piece of shit. This is going to be a crap album. What the hell's happened?" Blah 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 blah. And 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 then once, but once you put it into the album, then it makes sense. Yeah. But isolate it from that, it doesn't make sense. It's not the best. And the out of the video, I, I, ridiculous. As I well. mean, the video was ridiculous. Uh, I, I think Lupe was. Just, I think Lupe was just showing his. He didn't lose his lyrical skills because he knew. He, I, I feel like this. They miscalculated because I felt like he gave that song to the people who love his lyricism. system. Like, okay, I'm gonna give. I'm gonna give yeah. the, the mainstream superstar. But here, my diehard fans, I like my lyricism. I'm going to give them this ultra lyrical, ultra complex thing right out the front. This is for you guys. I don't think he ever, I don't think he ever expected it to be like a big ass hit. I think it basically was like, okay, I'm giving my lyrical fans this lyrical shit. Like, cause to me, Dumb It Down is like, is, is like, a, a, it's like, could be easily on Tetsuo and Youth right now. If you put Dumb It Down on Tetsuo and Youth, I would, you would not yeah. be at all. Yeah, yeah. That's a good shout, actually. Mm-hmm. So, but, but, okay. Why didn't he should have just done Go Go Gadget Flow instead? Put that out as this kind of you know the streets one. That hits all the targets for me. I mean, it hits it for me too. But I, some would dumb it down. It just sounds like my friend played that shit over and over again, trying to figure out what the fuck he was saying. Like it was like holy <laughs> shit. They were sitting there just like breaking shit down. Like that's what, Go Go Gadget Flow doesn't give that. Go Go Gadget Flow it gives you the complex lyricism, but it doesn't give you that. What the fuck is he saying? Shit. Go Go Gadget Flow, you get what he's saying off the off the bat. Yeah. Dumb it down is like. Like you gotta like you gotta like fucking pull out like a, a, a Rosetta Stone and shit to kind of figure that shit out. Go get the flow. It's like it's the complexity and the skill levels there, but it's basically like he's repping, he's repping, he's repping Chicago. So we get that part. That's simple. Dumb it down is like what the fuck is he talking about? Talking about like ISIS and Scuba Steve and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So my, my friend was like, he's talking about fucking Big Daddy shit. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like yeah. So. It, I think there's so many songs, man. There's so many songs yeah, uh, on this album. Yeah. So we 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 gotta get through this. So okay. So yeah. So let's. So the next one is I love Gold Watch. Gold Watch. Oh my god, I love that. The, the beat on that is just just for the Street deep. Fighter shit alone. Just for the Street Fighter lines oh. alone. Just for that yeah. alone, I got a this fucking song. Okay. So we got. So next one we got is Hip Hop Saved My Life. We gotta go through the. Yeah. It's like fifteen thousand songs on this thing. All right. So we got. Yeah. Hip hop saved my life. That one was about. That one was about. Was it young? Who was it about? Young Thug? No, Slim Thug. That was right. No, I thought it was Pimp C. Was... It's Slim Thug. No, no, that was. A... Yeah, yeah, that was about Slim Thug. Really? Hold up. Absolutely, hundred percent. It was dedicated to Bun B, but it was based on Slim Thug. Absolutely, hundred uh, percent. And it's a lovely video. Uh, I, I a very emotional video, actually. I have to say, and it's a beautiful song. Um, I mean. Yeah, I don't know. This is you're right. This is such a deep album. It's so long. I just oh, I, I just bumped the shit out of this album. I absolutely did. It's funny because the second half of it even is something I could just come back to. That if you're talking about Tetsu and Youth, this I think the second half of the album there are parts of it which are quite Tetsu-ish, um, but then it's still got kind of like quite quite kind of there's almost kind of like big beat stuff as well it kind of it's, it's a real mix of things actually a huge mix it's like it's like it's like it's like a it's like, a mix, it's, like it's kind of like an improved version of food and liquor but it's giving you those complex lyrics like for me intruder alert is a good song like that's that's, a, that's like like a, like a nice mid song so that's good but then to me my streets on fire holy shit when i hear that song tonight every time i get that tonight i go and I love, yeah. I love, I love, I love it, I love it, I love it. This is the second part of the Michael Young epic. And I'm like, holy shit, I love this song. I love it so much. I want to marry it and have babies with it. And and, and, if, and if it has kids in the adoption, I'll pick up the adopting kids too. That's how it is for me. But the other thing also is that I got the feeling he kept trying to put things in-house on this album. So the soundtrack does most of the album, yeah, in terms of production. And the only guest rapper is, what, Snoop Dogg? Mm-hmm. Oh no, and gem and gemstones, and on a die. Oh yeah, yeah. But in terms of if you talk about recognized names, yeah, then you got Snoop Dogg. That's it. That's the only big rapper who's who's a guest on it. That's literally it. And even in terms of uh, singers, I mean, again, there's no Jill Scott or anything like that. Yeah, it's all F and F. It's all it's all in house. Yeah, yeah, it's all F and F. F and F crew Mm -hmm. here to represent you. Um, so that's so that's to put your, so your argument that why this is more of a Lupe album than the first one was. Do you know what? Listen, but I'm not going to harp on about the point. But listen to the listen to the original Food and Liquor, yeah, and then listen to the Cool, and it will make a lot more sense, basically, because because <laughs> if you're talking about Intruder Alerts, but if you're talking about basically, but, uh, like 
famous people getting shoehorned into the original food and liquor. That's really what it feels like. Because Snoop Dogg's, like, his inclusion is very organic. It works perfectly. I love it. It's just fun. It's just so much fun. But but there's, there's nothing else kind of... It's really pure uncut Lupe. It's in-house production and it's in-house singers for the majority of it. Uh, well, no, pretty much all of it. And um, it works. It works really well. But it's also, it's kind of like building a movement. You know, it's trying to do this properly, like from the ground up, build a movement. And it works. And, that, and the album works so well that you, you start thinking, God damn it. He's done this with no outside help, pretty much. Here's what it feels no like. Outside I'll help. say this. You know, you know other album that this... This reminds me of, but it tried to be this, but the beats weren't all the way there. It's almost, it reminds me of what Eminem tried to do with the Marshall Mathers LP2, but the thing that hurt the Marshall Mathers LP2 was the music wasn't as strong as his lyricism was. I think, I think, like, this is pure Lupe, and that was pure Marshall at his, like, 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 he's like, he's giving his diehard fans the, the lyricism that they wanted, but at the same time, he was still trying to play it safe with those safe beats. Whereas on Lupe, he's giving you all Lupe, but he's also giving you music that goes along with it at the same time. Like he's, the, the music's not being sacrificed for the um, for the lyricism, if that makes any sense. It makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, we'll start to segue into the into other parts of his career. <laughs> this, is, this is the last time where he sounds vital. He sounds fully engaged. He sounds like he's not in a ruck with his record company constantly. He sounds like he's been given the leeway to go and do what he wants, yeah? And and I'm sorry, but he gave them a big hit. He gave them Superstar, which was gigantic over the world. It was huge, that song. Yeah, and this this album still sold healthily. You're not saying this wasn't a flop album. It wasn't a flop, like but it didn't sell as much as the first album, which is not good when you're when you're a record label. When you when you sell less than half of what you, what your first album sells, then you have to do something drastic, which leads me to the next album and then what he did. Because the next mm-hmm. album, the next album sold more than both of them. To be honest with you. <laughs> At this point, I have to say, and I've said this in my reviews openly, yeah, that Atlantic Records, Lupe, it, it's just this is one of those tragedies for me, yeah, where where an artist just signs the wrong label, you know, absolutely the wrong label, and yeah, I just wish to God he'd never signed with them. I really do. Even though, okay, fine. You, got the call. you get food and liquor. You get the call. You get the call. You get the call. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. And I think the call is is as close as you're ever going to get to the best quote unquote Lupe album, which is balanced for everyone. Yeah. Okay. Um, I I think mm-hmm. because no, I mean you, you say for everyone. You say for he's, everyone. He's yes. kind of he's kind of trying to split it into three albums, but yeah. <laughs> he's trying. He's trying. He he's just, trying to serve all masters. You know, he, he, he could have taken. He could conceivably take the best bits from each album and then put it into one album, uh-huh. and then it would be kind of like the cool, effectively. Uh-huh. You know, he's just expanding beyond. We haven't really received the, the second two doses, but I don't know. He just sounds so vital on this. Uh-huh. He sounds so engaged. Like I said, um, his lyricism is just. Re- ridiculous on this and and this is another point is that at this point everyone was kind of like okay shit don't jinx it no one say it but we might just have nas 2.0 here no one say it out loud in case the shit goes wrong yeah and then some motherfucker said it out loud and it all went wrong whoever whoever that was you screwed up yeah whoever actually vocalized it we were all thinking it it, we were all crossing fingers knees and toes that this would happen that he would be the new wait a minute is this like and then look what the fuck happened is this like an M. Night Shyamalan next Spielberg shit it could well be it genuinely could well be yeah but 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 he was the hope he was the hope yeah and then okay fast forward a few years like we started the podcast off we're in the midst of Kendrick's just about to release his third kind of third whatever album um and he's the new hope now I posit this to you because it hasn't been released yet okay by the time this podcast is out it will be so this could be a moot point but his first two albums, so you've got Good Kid, Good Kid, Mad City and uh, To Pimp a Butterfly. Now, for me, they're both classics, just undisputed yeah, classics. Yeah, yeah. Now, not everyone might like them, but they're classics. Yeah, they yeah. are, yeah. His third one, now, we'll, we'll know once this podcast is released, but obviously we're talking about it before, like a few days before it, it, the album's out. Um, we don't know what it's called. We know a bit about the production. We've heard Humble, and that's basically it, yeah. Uh, now for me uh, there's no way on earth I'm expecting a classic because just look at Lupe look at Nas look at all the other artists like especially solo artists look at Eminem even I mean Eminem you know like once you get to that third album 
and you've already released two classics, it gets difficult. It gets really hard to maintain that drive, the innovation, the you know that pure creativity. It starts to wane because there's so many different things just you know just bombarding you with different wants and needs and the record company are like okay you've done this you've done that you need to step it up on sales okay food and liquor sold the call didn't you need to step it up now do what we say yeah earn your keep again you know that kind of stuff now i'm not saying that's going to happen to kendrick no but but naturally i'd be put it this way standing like a few days before it gets released i'll be shocked if it's a classic i'll be shocked are you worried? Yeah. Now, I'd also be shocked if it's average as hell, but I think it'll be somewhere in between. I think it'll just be. I don't think it's gonna be out. I don't think it's gonna be average. At the very least, it's not gonna be average. I think. I think. I think. The, I think the floor is gonna be good. The floor is gonna be a good album, and then you, you go up from there. That's the. I think the floor is gonna be. But for me, for, for me, I just got. All I'll say. All I'll say is you never know. You just never. I mean, know you never. You one, never know. Once, but, an, but once an artist, a- once an artist has earned that right to do what they want. Uh-huh. Then what they want can be a poison chalice. Put it. I mean, I, I get. I, I, I agree know. with that, but I'm just saying, like, he hasn't. He had, like I said, I'll give him the benefit of doubt. Like, I'll give people the benefit of doubt until otherwise. I won't be. Like, I'm not a negative. Like until you give me a reason to be negative. Like I'm not. Because because sometimes because because like sometimes. People, oh, okay. Humble humble didn't inspire me with confidence. Put it that way. No, but then again, I didn't. Inspire, I wasn't the greatest opening single either. So like to me, I didn't didn't set me up for Pippa Butterfly. When I heard I, I was like, I is a good song. Okay. And same thing with Humble. Like, okay, Humble's a good song. But when I heard the whole to Pit of Butterfly, and then I heard the I version on to, on to Pit of Butterfly, I was like, holy shit. It works 10 times yeah. more. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Maybe Humble yeah. will work more. Like I said, that's the only reason why I'm not even, like, when I, that's why I'm, I don't, like, I understand, like, on a, on a business level and from a mainstream level, singles are important. But to I get that part. That's why I'm never a singles guy. Like, I understand intellectually and business minded, I get that part right there. To me, I don't judge an artist until a music artist until I hear the whole album. And then once I hear the whole album, I do that. Regardless no, no, of no. The, I get that. Yeah, I'm just saying from a historical yeah, yeah, perspective. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That, 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 that you know, <laughs> basically, can, there's always a new whoever. Yeah. I, I will so say this. Lupe was the new Nas. Yeah. Kendrick is effectively the new Lupe. And then in a few years' time, someone will be the new Kendrick. Right, you know, Drake is the new Jay Z. Before that, Jay Z was the new, was the new Big Daddy Kane. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> you know, yeah. It, it always happens. It's cycle, it's cycle, it's cycles. Things. Yeah, everything's a cycle. And at some point in the future, Kendrick will stop. Yeah, he'll stop being great. But arguably, he will but, do. But, 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 Nas hasn't yeah. released an album for five years now. You know, he's. I think he's he's pretty much bowing out of the game now, which is fine by me because I don't want him to be just this law of diminishing returns. I love that guy. I saw Jay Z just adhere to this law of diminishing returns <laughs> just for the sake of chasing. I will records. say though, I will say though, that I just going to sound just going to sound sacrilegious, and I love Kendrick. Like I said. I'd rather I'd rather him switch dates to the New Gorillas album. I wish the New Gorillas album's coming next week, and I wish Kendrick's album's coming at the end of the month. But that's just me personally. I'm more excited about that album than I am about the Kendrick album. To me, I, I, let me tell you what kind of Kendrick fan I am. I'm not like 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 a like a uh, like a like a oh my god I worship the Grady Walks on fan. I'm a fan where it's like once I get the album in my hand, if it's good, then I'll enjoy it. You know what I'm saying? Like I never had like going back to Lupe, like except for oh my god, except for the the last the, the other two. Um, uh, um, lasers and food liquor too. Um, I'm always looking for. I'm always looking forward to to, to Lupe. Whether he's he, his game is hit and miss. I'm always waiting for Lupe to give me a strong album. Like there's always like a 50 50 chance he'll give me a great album at this point. If you look at his whole career. It's like it's like it's like a 50 50 chance he's gonna he's gonna either give me a mediocre album. It's a coin toss. It's a literal yeah. coin toss. Like I said, if you I will take. To me, okay, and this to me, I will take a, a great Lupe album over a Kendrick album any day. That's just me, though. I love Kendrick. I respect Kendrick. I think Kendrick's one of the best in the game right now. But Kendrick at his Kendrick at his best doesn't inspire me like Lupe at his best. That's just but that's just me, though. But 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 Kendrick's up there. Don't get me wrong. But he doesn't like he doesn't give me that 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 passion that like when you hear the Pimp a Butterfly, I think it's a brilliant album. I can play it all the way through left and right right there, and I think it's a brilliant album. But Kendrick. Doesn't inspire me lyrically, and don't get me wrong. Like his, his subject matter is fantastic, but I think Lupe has a skill level of wordplay. To me, as a literature, like a like like a literature person, like Lupe is just on another level with Kendrick. Kendrick is great, but when Lupe is when when Lupe's literacy, literacy, I mean, uh, I can't even say the fucking words because I'm, I'm losing my mind. When 
Lupe's wordplay and flows and understanding of storytelling and all the things like plot, character, theme, diction, when it's all there, he's up there with some of the very best writers. I, I and I will put that I will put that down right there. And Kendrick is great, but I don't think he has Lupe is a prodigy. Kendrick is is just, is a great rapper. If that I don't know if you agree with me on that one. What? I don't. I don't think. I don't. I know. I think. Oh, no, no. I'm saying. Man. I think. I think Kendrick is fantastic. I think Kendrick is brilliant and great. I think Lupe. When when Lupe is at his ten, if you put Kendrick at a ten and Lupe at a ten, that's when you come. When it comes to skill level, I'm gonna ask you that. Put, put Kendrick at his ten and put Lupe at his ten. Whose skill level is gonna be is gonna be maximum at that point? If you put them at ten. I think that's the coin toss. I genuinely do. If you'd asked me a few years ago, I probably would have said Lupe. But but ask me now with the context of, you know, I mean, I'm going to include Section 80 because I think that was a really good album. Mm-hmm. Um, Kendrick's like... I'm talking about technical. I'm talking man, about te- that, that, that guy, no, but if you're talking about his, his uppermost level, yeah. yeah, that guy can fucking rip oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I mean, he really can. He absolutely can. Oh, yeah. I'm not saying um, that, yeah. And so can Lupe. The, the interesting thing is that uh, uh, one, of these, one of the reasons I keep talking about Kendrick and Lupe is because they've clashed a little bit, yeah. You know, after, after Kendrick dropped that control verse, huh. then, um, <laughs> which shook up the world, everything, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Then Lupe very quickly put out... Um, Couple of them. Yeah. What was it called? I forgot what they were called. He put like three of them. Oh my put, like, god! I listened to it a million times. How yeah. have I forgot? S- no, it's like three of them. He did three. He did three versions yeah, yeah, yeah. of it. Yeah, I forgot what it was called though. SL two. SL two. Oh yeah, yeah. Two like super Lupe yeah. rap. Yeah, super Lupe raps. Yeah. SLR two. Yeah. And and I think it was SLR two, right? And then he did three, and I didn't think it was that great. But SLR two was basically. So it was it was basically doing what I'm saying now. It was basically telling Kendrick, "Look, you're the new hot thing. Yeah, don't <laughs> don't think I can't come out, yeah. right? And don't think that I am the ultimate. I was once the new hot thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just like you are. And one day it'll be someone else. Effectively, that's what you're saying. And oh my god, I I listened to that. Con- that's what I'm talking that was about. Incredible. That's what I'm talking about right there. That's new. Lu- and I hear control. You're, right. you're, control, you're absolutely I right because he dropped that. He dropped that in the in the matter of a few days. Yeah, and and. And it was absolutely <laughs> stunning, and that's his. That is his peak limit. He can just go absolutely. That's my, that's the point. But then, but then Kendrick did control. So, so no, but my, you know, they're both they're point. both ten out of ten rappers for me. No, I'm I'm saying t- Kendrick to ten. I'm saying that. But I'm just saying if you put Lupe at his ten, when you when, when, when Lupe wants to go really hard, if Lupe wants to go really hard, like like the control there, my control there, I think that's fantastic. When I heard Super, Super Lupe rap too, that's not can, control. Not even near that. Not even close to that Super Lupe rap too. Are you saying that? Are you saying are you saying control is close to that Super Lupe rap too? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, of course it is. Of course, <laughs> of course it is. They're both comparable. What? That was a, that. Was, oh man. What? Yes, they are. Oh my god. I don't think that's even controversial to say. Come on. Nah, nah. I, I control is great. Control is great. Don't get me wrong. It's great, but it's not nowhere near Super Lupe rap. Come on. The, the the technical level the technical level of super Lupe rap compared to the technical level of control really are you saying are you saying the t- technical level is the same is that what you're telling me is that what you're saying I, I'm saying I'm absolutely saying they're comparable absolutely they're different they're, no they're, they're different beasts they are they're different beasts yeah but if you're talking about just ripping tracks to shreds both of them do it just in different ways and here's my other my final point because we're <laughs> going on um okay 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 i'm gonna pivot to something else yeah now there's been an album that i've wanted to cover on transit Lambert and rebels for a long time for months and months and months and we just haven't got to it and it's called light water for chocolate by common it was released in 2000 now for me yeah that is a toss-up for best rap album this century thus far for me it's it's in the top five yeah and it just no one will ever tell me any different but again you're talking about something that didn't hit the 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 commercial heights okay it had the light which and it got it got you know it sold for healthily i think it went gold and stuff like that whatever now to pimp a butterfly is very similar in a lot of ways to uh, like water for chocolate you know this the moment i i said it in the review after a couple of days and, and as soon as i heard it i was kind of like man you know this has been done before um and for me, Common's album is just absolutely stunning. For my generation, that was also one of the kind of albums that inspired a lot of people to rap. That, that specifically that album, you know, um, it's that good. 
Like, I know you're not very au fait with Common, and, uh, and like, I think we, we talked about this one a, quite a long time ago uh, about covering it, and you've not really heard it and stuff. I'd be really interested to know what you make of Light Water for Chocolate, um, because Common to me was was one of my great hopes, and then and that was his Jordan moment. That album was his Jordan moment, absolutely. It's it's just like wow. So if you again, if you're talking about that, was like what. Uh, well about six years before Lupe dropped yeah so Common had already been around for a while but that was six years before Food and Liquor and um, there's, a, there's a real timeline of, of genial artists you know you've got Nas you've got Common you've got Lupe you've got Kendrick these are the kind of artists that speak to someone like you and I actually uh, like and, and probably some of our listeners as well so I don't know are we completely going off the point here but it's, it's just fun to it's always fun to talk rap. <laughs> yeah um Okay, so let's wrap up the call. Okay. Whilst the going is good and we're not pissing off any more people. <laughs> um, now, are we, are we agreeing to just redact lasers? Or, uh, oh, or uh, all I'll say is, is that I'm looking at my playlist right here and the only two songs I got on there are um, Words I Never Said and All Black Everything and that's about it. That's it. And then I'll even, okay, and I'll even, I'll even go even darker. For Food and Liquor 2, the only out, the only song track I have on my playlist is Lamborghini Angels. And that's it. So out of those two albums, I only have three songs. If you have anything else, if you if you have something to say about those albums, we can discuss that. But that's that's how my playlist I'm looking at right here, right now. It goes to Cool. It goes, Words Never Said, All Black Everything, Lamborghini Angels. And then it goes right into Tattoo on Youth. Yeah, I mean... I, I think I reviewed both of these albums actually. Uh-huh. It's hilarious because for rap reviews, I managed to. Uh, I wasn't there for <laughs> for um, food and liquor and the call, mm-hmm. but I was there for lasers and food and liquor too. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> fuck you. And then I didn't even do Tetsu and you, so I literally did like the the two worst albums. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, uh, lasers. I think we could definitely talk about it, but I don't really want to because okay. it just pissed me off. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it would really I did a really comprehensive review of it I wasn't very complimentary about it um, and, and I was basically saying look Lupe is in a really bad record label situation yeah. right now um, there, there, there are still there are still there are still like two or three moments on here which I which I think are fine but like for for the context but also I also think Lupe fucked up as well I think he was yes. in a massive ruck and he took his eye off the ball massively as well he wanted to sell uh, records and it's just the giant the whole thing was giant cluster. he wanted to sell basically. records as much as Atlantic at that point he was tired of being broke he wanted to sell some records so he kind of he kind of gave up some some stuff beautiful he, girls all oh, over the world that fucking he could have done that song he could have done that song instead of B.O.B. <laughs> Did you ever? Do you ever hear? The, did you ever hear the Lupe take on that song? The original it got leaked. Oh no 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 no! no. At first, oh man. my lord! Sir, was it bad? Do you know what? Um, j- y- y- listen, just in case Lupe ever listens to this, I love you, man. But that was the worst piece of shit I've ever fucking heard in my life, and and it and it really pissed me off because the thing is that was such a gigantic hit, yeah, and it was such a good song. The beat was nice. The chorus was brilliant yeah from a, comp- a commercial perspective and bob commits to that song yeah if you listen to the version that Lu- <laughs> i'm sure it's on youtube yeah if you listen to the version that lupe does yeah he basically sounds like he's been drugged yeah and, <laughs> and like and handcuffed and and just thrown in the recording booth and said you are coming up with something and he just does the bare minimum to scrape through on that track i swear to god i could have gone in there and just done a better job myself just like no no question in my mind but then he tries it again with that heart Durner song crying out loud he tries something like that again with that heart with that guy sebastian guy with that um with that heart Durner song of food liquor too he tries to go that route again but, but this this is my point uh-huh. is that then he ends up he basically ends up having to do the same thing anyway <laughs> but in a lesser way so you end up with something like Out of My Head by uh, featuring Trey songs. Uh-huh. Yeah. Now, instead of that, you could have had Beautiful Girls yeah. All Over the World yeah. or whatever it's called. It would have, have been a hit, yeah. It would have been a huge hit if he'd just committed, if he'd literally done what he did on Paris, Tokyo, <laughs> yeah, and just transposed that. Or Daydream, or Daydream, or Daydream. So why didn't he do it? Yeah, now, now I can completely understand digging your heels in his record company with being dicks. You know, 
he could rightfully say, look, I gave you the call. It's a classic. Yeah. Okay. It didn't sell as well, but Superstar sold loads. I gave you loads of singles, you know, get off my back. Yeah. But words I never said, I thought it struck a decent balance. Yeah, yeah. I liked it at the time. I mean, I don't think it's aged very well, but I liked it at the time. Um, <laughs> ironically, I think Out of My Head is actually quite a fun song. I don't think it's great. The show goes on as his biggest single ever. Yeah. No, no single of his has ever sold as much as the show goes on, which is a that. bizarre statement. I hate that song. I, it took it took me a long time. But but you know what the funny thing is, he actually commits in that song. Yeah, I mean the lyrics are fine. Don't get me wrong. He he, the lyrics are no no. But this is the point: is that the the song is the song is in general just shit. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but but. No, it is, but, <laughs> but at least he commits, okay. <laughs> but it is, but at least he commits to the verses. Yeah, at least he commits to it. And But if you hear the, oh my God, if you hear the leaked demo to Nothing On You, you would just cringe. You'd absolutely be like, look, man, just suck it up. This is clearly going to be a hit. Just do it. Yeah, do whatever it takes. To, I got know. through Lasers oh. one and a half times. And I think I got through Food and Liquor, maybe even, maybe even less than one and a half times. Food and Liquor too. The only thing I got out of that. No, okay, okay. I, I have to admit, I think I'm a bit confused about how harsh you're being on Food and Liquor too, because I, I don't think it's a no. Because you know why? You know why? If if Tetsuo and Youth never came out, I would have been more favorable towards Food and Liquor too. But because Tetsuo and Youth came out, that dipped like it was. It, 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 it's not a terrible album, but when Tetsuo and Youth came out, I I disregarded that album except for Lamborghini Angel. I pretty much disregarded everything on that album. Except for the angels, I even like I even like the one song we did with the the um the Pete Rock Seal Seal Smooth kind of like redo, even though people yeah, complained about yeah. that. <laughs> I didn't I didn't really like that. That took a while to sort of grow on me. At first, I was kind of but like, like I said, when Tattoo and Youth came out, that was the Lupe I wanted. Like I felt like when I heard Lasers and I heard Food and Liquor too, it was like I heard I heard diluted Lupe. And then when I heard Tesla and Youth, I heard I heard Lupe saying, "You know what? You guys can't think I fucking rap." I felt like when I heard Tesla and Youth. It's like, I'm going to show you motherfuckers once for all how well I can rap. And he started off with a fucking 8 and 49 second song <laughs> to show you motherfuckers. He went beyond fucking dumb it down. He said, you ever doubt me again, you motherfuckers? You ever, ever doubt me again? Ever? <laughs> that's how, that's, when I heard Mural, that's what I felt. I was like, yeah, motherfucker, that's what I'm talking about. That's the thing I know. That's how I feel. And that's why Food and Liquor 2, even though it's, a, it's an okay album, Will never get played again in my life. So never, never get it. But that's just me, though. I, I'm pretty sure you have a different take on it. I mean, no, no I mean, I, I think I gave it like a seven or something like that, around that mark, yeah. um, which I thought was I was being a little bit charitable. I have to admit, uh-huh. but at that stage, I was just kind of like, get back, Lupe, come back. You were desperate, to the yeah. Life. You were desperate for Lupe, yeah. You were desperate. Yeah, for Lupe. but I mean, I, actually, it's not a bad album. It's or not. If that had been released by some random, yeah, you'd oh, say, no. oh, okay, that's pretty good, you know. And, and Lamborghini Angels is a great song. Yes. Um, I, I think Bitch Bad's okay. It was misconstrued, but it's okay. Yeah. Around My Way, Freedom Mate Free, it took me a while yeah. because of the song. The lyrics are great, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, the lyrics are great. Yeah. Um, Rose is a bit cheesy. <laughs> Strange Fruition. Strange Fruition is actually a really good song. Yeah. It, that, is a, that is one of those ones where soundtrack just kills it. Um, and then Battle Scars was the big single from it in certain uh, markets. Like, it was huge yeah. in Australia. Oh, I, I, so I sure it was. Yeah. Um, so so there, there are some moments on it. It's it's a perfectly good album, but it's also one that's not particularly memorable. That's, Compared to yeah. Tesla and Youth. It's just so close to Tesla and Youth. It's like, I hear Tesla and Youth, and then I hear this one, and I'm like, I can't, I can't even, I can't, get, I, can't re, I, I can't waste my time listening to Mediocre Lupe when I hear this. When I hear when, when, when an eight minute and forty nine second song is better than that whole, your whole album, I can't go back to you. I just can't do it. I and like I said, it's not a like I said, it's not a bad album. Like by any circumstances, like if it was anybody else but Lupe, I'm like okay, it's a decent album. But I know what Lupe is capable of, and that's why it's, it, that's why I'm so much more harder on that that album than I would normally be. If it was like somebody like a like 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 Drake or somebody, like that, I'm like okay, Drake, okay, you got this. If for somebody if some if somebody like I don't have that I don't see as one of the greatest lyricists I ever came across, like in any genre, then I'd be like, okay, that's passable. But for, for, for Lupe, that I know what he's capable of, after I heard him do the cool, I'm like, and food and liquor, I'm like, nah, man, this is not cutting it for me. And like I said, and like I said, I wish Lupe many successes. I never want to see Lupe fail. If, if, he, if he get record sales, then good, you, you worked your ass off. You're, you're a skilled level. Those albums aren't for me, 
but I'm never going to wish him bad luck. If he wants to make money, let him make money. Like, you are, at the end of the day, as much as you're an artist, you're also a business person, and you have to sell records at some point. Otherwise, you can't continue doing what you're doing. Now, I prefer Ultra Lyrical Lupe as compared to I Gotta Sell Records Lupe, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fault him for that. But at the same time, when I could, when I put Food Nicker Two up against Food Nicker One or The Cool or Tetsuo and Youth, it kind of find I find it wanting. But like you said, I I'll give it like a solid six, maybe seven. Yeah. Well, also listen, listen. There's there's also one massive problem with this, which is why call it Food and Liquor Two. Yeah, that's not good. If ever you're just going to shit on your own legacy, yeah, <laughs> that it's doing that, right? Yeah. Uh huh. I mean, why? That it was absolutely needless to call it Food and Liquor Two. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, yeah and, and and then like there's that whole sort of subtitled the Great American, American Rap, Rap Album Part, part one. one. Yeah, we're never going to get a Part Two. You know, we're not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and so basically. There's already this bullshit where you know part two is never going to come out, and he's he's shitting on the legacy of food and liquor by calling this the sequel. So it's kind of, have you ever have you ever actually played food and liquor first and then this album straight afterwards, like a one two, oh as if this God. was the actual sequel? It's embarrassing. Yes, it is. He tried to pull Stillmatic. He tried to do. He tried to pull Stillmatic, and it didn't work. Oh my lord! He tried. Or or like only only built for Cuban Links yeah. one and two. Yeah. You can play those two. Yeah back to back because it makes fucking sense because they took their time and, and, and they did it even properly. with the Marshall Mathers LP part two even though the beats aren't there the concept is there the concept of like yeah, how he came yeah. far away makes it but he's not committing to a concept on that Food and Liquor 2 album like there's no reason for you to call it Food and Liquor 2 there's no conceptual reason for you to even call it that album unless all, all, all you're trying to do is you're trying to, you're trying to pull your old fans back like okay I'm back I'm the old Lupe back yeah. but you're still trying to pull in your new yeah. fans so which one is it that's the problem yeah Okay, I'm done on those two. Okay, albums, yes, yes. We gave it. We gave it. Um, okay, go ahead. All right. So. We gave it a shot. Yeah, we gave it a shot. All okay. right. So let's let's talk about let's talk about mural before we get to uh, Tesla and Youth. Where were you when you first heard mural? I was at home and I was sick and I didn't go to work. And to be honest, part of why I was sick was kind of slightly excusey because Lupe dropped that album. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> I was just like, but I, I was legitimately not well that day. But it, it was kind of, what was it? It was January, wasn't it? It was like a, ja- yeah, it was a January kind of thing. And I was like, um, oh man, it was, I think it was like really cold outside. It wasn't well. I was like, I had the house to myself. And um, I was like, damn, I might get to listen to Lupe today. And I just had it on repeat for the Ooh-wee. whole day. Hold. And in fact, do you know what's funny? Is that I think the day before I was sick as well. So what I did is I listened to every single Lupe album back to back. Yeah. Just the whole day, and then the next day, I just committed to to, to Tetsuya and Youth, Ooh. and it's just like, oh, and I was actually, I have to admit, I was kind of like, I was pretty shocked. I was pretty shocked. <laughs> um, I mean, it's, it's funny. Like, I'm I'm going to preface all of what I say about this album by okay. saying that I haven't really connected with it like you have, yeah. And I don't listen to this regularly now. Um, I, I, I bumped it a lot for for a certain amount of time and then I stopped basically and I haven't really listened to it much since um but that's no that's that's no way in no way a commentary on the quality of the album it's just I, it's it's a really dense album and yes. you have to kind of be in the mood for it yeah, you, have, and, you have to um, commit you do have to commit to the album I will give you yeah, that yeah you have to commit but but this but in terms of quality yes this is just outstanding yeah. but Again, you see, this hasn't got the balance that the cool had, and you know it hasn't got a balance of like not just singles but hooks and this and that. Yeah. This is just Lupe, like you said before. This is Lupe with a big f you <laughs> to people who thought that he'd lost the ability of how to just make really good rapidity rap music. Yes, <laughs> you yes, know, like really super lyrical shit, and uh, you know he just goes, "Oh man." You know, what Miro felt like to me. Miro felt like the first time I heard rap guy. When I first heard it, I was like, holy shit. I feel like that was Eminem saying, you guys want to talk shit about relapse and you want to talk shit about um, uh, recovery. I'm going to show you guys that I can still do this shit. Once, I'm going to show you, like, you're not even going to touch me. And then that's what I felt with Mural. But the difference between this one and and Rap God is Eminem started doing all different kind of flows and this and that. Lupe does this casual, like this casual flow, but it's so intricate. It's like casual and intricate. And I'm like, how do you fucking do a casual flow but make it so fucking intricate at the same time? Whereas Eminem was like doing 
dexterity. He was like just doing like juggling acts. And he was like, he was Eminem was on a motorcycle, juggling chainsaws, jumping over sharks, and going up there. And Lupe was taking a stroll to the park, and people still couldn't catch up with him. I was like, God damn, how do you take a stroll to the park and people can't catch up with you? It just sounds so elegant, that piano loop. Mm-hmm. Even when the even when Tetsu Yuji opens up with that summer with those with the, with the summer like interlude, and it opens up with it, the intro. Like you get that little like feeling, and it goes right into that. And he's like just elegantly, like it's 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 like it's like elegant, it's like it's like elegant destruction, it's er- elegant lyrical destruction, the whole entire thing. And like I think this is like dumb it down, take it to the to to, to the to, to the ultimate level. Like this is dumb it down, and like. Dumb it down is like the ske- the skeleton. This is like all the meat and bone and, and and heart and organs all wrapped around. Dumb it down once and for all. And it's basically he's like, okay, this is it. And then he goes into the album with after that. It's it's I just feel like this album has like this this lush. This, it feels lush to me. It just feels lush and warm. I mean, you got stuff like Chopper and Deliver, but for the most part, it just feels like. It feels warm, and you got the like the the summer, and you got fall, and you got spring and winter and stuff like that. It's like it's just got this feel that it feels like. And I, like I said, I give it to you. This one, this one is dense. This is not for uh, the mainstream at all. It's just not. I mean, even though the music, I would say, I would, I would still say the music is accessible. I think it's just that the wordplay is so it's so like out there for most people that they're not even gonna like after a while they're just gonna go numb. And just go. I want to hear something more simple. Yeah, and and, and I love the concept of it, mm. which is you know with with the seasons and stuff like that. And it's hilarious because what like about less than maybe fifteen months later, um, Drake dropped views, and then he started going, <laughs> he started going on about oh yeah, this is split into like spring, summer, oh fall, God. winter. Jesus. And then, and then uh, but, but then that was a little bit after it actually dropped, and then people were like, "Hang on a sec, um, I'm pretty sure Lupe did that literally at the beginning of last year." <laughs> so funny, yeah. oh Drake. Um, but yeah, the, like <sighs> adoration of the Magi. I yeah, well, I, I mean, hang on. So with this album, because you like you you bump this constantly. Now, someone told me. That basically you should listen to this backwards. Mm-hmm. So I actually tried it, yeah. yeah. And um, like it still felt perfectly great, blah blah yeah. blah blah. But in terms of the concept, I didn't really spend loads of time delving into yeah. it. So is that is that correct? There's Does a, it really go spring? There's a, there, some, like there, you know. there, there, it's kind of like it's kind of like a reverse. It kind of like goes, it's like it's like it goes one way and then you go up, but it's 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 still kind of vague. I mean, because sometimes I'm, I'm, when, I, when I think about that backward thing, it's like I ask myself a question. I go, "Am I just am I just fan wanking this into thinking it's something, or is it actually there?" Because you can kind of say like it's like it's like, it's like a it's like a it's like the birth of somebody going into like going into prison, and then he comes out and he's reborn again. You can kind of go like the, the guy is kind of like like there's a it's like a video game. It's like you you select it in, and then the the kid is born, and then there's his mother. And then he's in the ghetto, and then he's hanging out with these kids, and then all of a sudden, like at some point, he's still getting involved with more and more bullshit. He goes into prison, then he comes out of prison, and he's like, you know, fuck this life, and then he's reborn, like he paints himself a whole new mural. So in that way, it does make sense. But I question sometimes, like, am I fan wanking this, or is this the way that it's supposed to be? It can go either way, but I do, I am suspicious about are we are, are Lupe fans just bullshitting themselves into thinking this that way? So I'm saying it's like a fifty fifty chance it can go either way. That's how I'll say. Yeah. And, and I mean, there were a lot of kind of things that kept, a lot of songs that kept getting released in the build up to this. Yeah. But then the actual album was so incredibly different. You know, I mean, there was like fucking Ed Sheeran one. And oh Old my God. Kind of, I was like, what is this? Oh, Jesus. I, was like, I mean, that even hit like the, the Billboard 100 and, and stuff. But it was just i don't know it's it's funny it was such a strange build up and again because he was still with atlantic at this point right and um which he's not anymore he's fi- this was his last album with atlantic so at least they let him drop like a good album as the last one um i don't know it i think this was clearly one for the fans so credit to atlantic that they'd let him drop this put the the way it was you know 
Um, I'm guessing it didn't cost a lot of money and they didn't really promote it and all this kind of stuff. But the quality um, is strong. The quality is incredibly yeah, strong. Yeah, yeah. Yes. It it, is. There's no denying it that. Is. It's, it's, well, it's well crafted. I don't, I, don't, I don't hear one bullshit song on this, this album. I'll be honest with you. I mean, some songs are stronger than others, of course. But I don't think there's any song on this album that he didn't put effort and energy into. <sighs> It's almost constructed like an art piece. This one, the cover, the um, cover is like it tells you. It's like it's yeah. The cover is yeah, literally. It's sophisticated. It's, it's, yeah. it's, he 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 did it right. He yeah, painted he did it, the yeah. cover. Yeah, yeah. Um, Somebody made an argument. Let me ask you a question. It, it, Let me ask you a question before you go. Into okay. That. I was I was I was I was watching this the viewers talking about Lupe. They were talking about the um the Drogas album, which we can kind of go into that a little bit first, real quick. But yeah, whatever. But um, but they were talking about it's like Lupe's biggest danger is he's a smart guy. And like sometimes it's dangerous. He's too smart. He like he 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 outsmarts himself because he thinks he's so smart. Like sometimes he yeah he think he's smart. yeah yeah. You agree yeah. with that one? Absolutely, one hundred thousand fucking. <laughs> because you know why? You know why? Because I bet you and I are exactly the same sort of. Thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I bet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you know what I mean? I agree. Uh, it's the sort of thing that I think I I might have been prone to doing. Where, where I just start taking things so deep that I'm kind of like, okay, I'm being really clever, and then I out clever everyone else, and then out clever myself by being too clever. <laughs> <laughs> I know my brother's like that as well. <laughs> I'm like that. I'm guessing you are as yeah. well. And and Lupe most definitely is. Absolutely. I, I, I had a girl tell me. I had a girl tell me one time, and this is not nothing against her because she was she did what she had to do, and I don't think she was dumb. She was like, she said to me, she was like, like, why do you like a girl like me? I'm dumb. I'm like, what the fuck are you? I was like, what the hell? And then, I, then, and then I had to catch myself. I was like, what am I talking to her about? I'm, I'm not talking to her about regular shit. I'm trying to like fucking talk about like deep like shit. And like sometimes girls don't want to hear that shit. Not to say that girl, you know what I'm saying? Like, like sometimes, like sometimes people just want to just talk, just fucking talk about regular shit. You have to be talking about, yeah, I'm gonna be deep. Let's talk about like mitosis and meiosis. And I'm like, what the hell? Like people don't want to talk about that shit. People just imagine when, it's when sometimes it's okay to enjoy life. And just enjoy it and just be there. Be a part of that. It's a, it's a, it's a... Yeah, but also also people respond to different things. Oh, yeah. You know? Like, I remember once once I went to, like, a birthday party at a pizza restaurant or whatever. And um, and basically, I, w- I went with one of my, my best friends at the time. And we kind of had, like, different handles on the room. Yeah, like, readings of the room. Yeah. So, basically, you have white wine, you have red wine, and you have rosé. Now, that's a gross simplification, but... So basically, this girl, this girl who I knew, she uh, she ordered rosé. She's like, I wonder how they make rosé, and I, and I'd literally, I, I really genuinely wasn't being like a smart ass or anything, but I'd gone wine tasting like a week before, so I knew the answer. Okay. So I was like, okay, so here's the thing: what they do is they they there's tannins in wine, so they don't do it as long, and blah 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 blah. And then and then she started groaning, yeah, like, oh my god, Jessel, you always do this, you always know the answers, you always know all this stuff, <laughs> stupidly intelligent, yeah. And then, and then, then my friend who had a better reading on the room, he was just like, "Yeah, they just mix the white wine and the red wine. <laughs> That's how they make rosé." He was just like a stupid response, yeah. And everyone laughed at that, and it, it was funny. But then, so basically, that initial reading of the room went to my friend. Yeah, he got it. Years later, someone came up to him and they were like, "I always remember that story you told about how rosé was made." <laughs> <laughs> so they may not appreciate it at that point; they'll appreciate it later on. That's exactly it. It's the kind of thing where you take away that thing. You think about it. You're like, oh, yeah, wow, that's actually quite interesting. Even if it, it didn't kind of read the vibe of the room. And that's the kind of person that that's the kind of person that I think Lupe is. I don't think he's always he always cares about the vibe of the room because he's so intelligent. Yeah, I think he needs to impart his wisdom. I'm going to defend that because you want the more interesting. Maybe maybe the room may not get that. But there's somebody in the room that's like, holy shit, that person's interesting. And that's the person you're yeah. going to connect with more. Not to say that other people aren't as intelligent. I think there's a danger sometimes with, 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 with people who think like we do sometimes. It's like everybody's smart in their own way. Like I'm smart when it comes to like 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 literature and stuff like that. But my friend is excellent in science when it comes to math. I'm fucking terrible at math. I'm horrendous. I'm like a C, I'm a C plus student at best when it comes to math. So on that level, I know jack shit or whatever. But he knows a lot of shit about that or science and he's more he's more i'm more logical when it comes to abstract thought if that makes any sense but he's more logical when it comes to like actual real world application like me i'm more like looking over i can see i see the real world but i'm looking at ways around it and bending around corners and looking at different avenues look at it whereas he's like okay he goes into a room and he sees the room for what it is and he can attack it accordingly i go into the room 
I look around and I see and I and I and I'm and I'm going past the surface trying to see okay what's below the surface. He's kind of like okay, this is the room, this is the field, this is that, and he adapts to it. Because he's a person where he can, he can literally go into a room and fit into adapt to that room. I'm the person that can go into a room and like and like thirty percent will get me, and other seventy percent like who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> and that's how. And, that, and, that, and that's pretty much how it goes. And I think Lupe is the guy that thirty percent gets him, and other thirty percent like, who yeah. the fuck is this guy? Yeah. And I think, and I'm, I'm sensing you're like in between that. I think I'm in between. Yeah, I could be. It depends what day it is, basically. Huh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, especially since. Um, but I, I reckon Lupe's like that. I absolutely think. And and I think the thing is, I think the trick is, is that you have to find your lane and find the, the right people to be around to be yourself because otherwise if you're kind of hanging around the wrong people which is something i think i think i probably did when i was at school maybe not wrong but just not me um then and i think that's the the lesson for lupe is that he has to be around the right people which i mean with with the whole drogas thing he's trying he's, I, he's trying it again he's yeah. trying find your stick of your he's trying it again isn't he yeah your fans, you, He's you, you know what your fans want. Just give you, just, just stick to what you. I mean, not not saying you can't experiment. We, we want Lupe to experiment. We want you to experiment in a quality way. We don't want you to. I think at this point, Lupe needs to understand that there's going to be a certain. He's, he has a certain fan base, and I think if he tours, I, I, I would say this to Lupe. If you tour with the right people, you'll get you, you'll get people exposed to you. But I think at this point, when people want to hear Lupe, people want to hear intricate. Off the cuff, and like beyond the norm shit. We don't want to hear you sound like trap beats. Like we don't want to hear Lupe. When I heard Drogas, I'm like, okay, these trap beats are okay, but like I don't go to Lupe to hear trap beats. Like I want to hear Lupe be off the beaten path. Lupe, you you be the trendsetter, and people have to catch up to you at some point. But I guess what with him is he wants to make. At the same time, he he's struggling with himself because I feel like he wants to make money. Who want, who doesn't want to make money? Who want, who who doesn't want to make a good living? He, when enjoy the fruits of his labor, and I think he struggles with his, his his skill level, which is tremendous, with his with his real life need for he wants to make money and be successful. And like I said, the textual and youths of the world are not going to get him to be successful. It's going to get him critical respect and his fans respect, but it's not going to sell him any records. And I think that at this point, he's I'm not an ageist either, but the kids now are going to listen to the kids. The people who are closer to their age, not Lupe. So Lupe kind of has to yeah. stick with that. No matter how good he sounds on these trap beats, I think people are not going to be able to relate to Lupe. They're just not going to be able to do it. But so he stick to his fans and let and let his legacy speak for itself, and then it'll come around. Because if Lupe, I would say this: if Lupe was the, was to keep his quality level up, you know how how well received he would be later on in life. You know how like how his back how huge his back catalog would have been if it was consistent. You know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I completely agree. And uh, I think the thing is, again, he's trying to be too clever for his own good. He's basically trying to reverse engineer success over what, the course of one year. So he's re- going to release three albums in one year. Now, the first one is Drogas Light. And and I think it's called Light for a number of reasons. It's called Light because it, it feels lighter than the other ones. It's called Light because it's kind of like, you know, kind of like a, a, a diet cola, basically, kind of thing. And But... He doesn't have to do that, you know. In in fact, I don't even think it's a bad album at all. It, the, I think the first time you listen to it, you're kind of like, "What the fuck is this uh-huh. shit?" Yeah, but actually, it's, it's the, not the more bad. you listen to it's it, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. It's not bad at all. It's a it's a good consistent listen. Um, but but again, this is the thing: is that he's basically it's very schizophrenic. It's, it's very schizoph- patr. It's schizoph- no, it's very patronizing. Okay. It's very patronizing. If if I were a kid listening to this, knowing what I know about Lupe, mm-hmm. yeah, I think. Why is this guy kind of D- dumbing it down? Why can't he just be himself? Yeah. Why can't he just make the music that I even tweeted this today? I was kind of make the music that makes you happy. Yes. Does does this really make Lupe happy? I don't think so. Does this album? No, it doesn't. Now I can understand him trying to do a three album sequence that gets him back to greatness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In 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 like the whole commercial sense or critical sense yeah. or everything sense. Yeah. But this is not the way to do it. I mean, this album came and went within a week. Yes. Yeah. It really did. It did not hit the mark whatsoever. Um, even a song like Pick Up the Phone, you know, that's supposed to be one of his kind of like, you know, again, like cheesy hits with a singer on it, blah, 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 blah. Didn't hit the mark. Yeah. And, and 
and okay fine it's a perfectly song a uh, perfectly decent album it has decent replay value but again it didn't hit the mark okay now drogus what's drogus going to be i think it'll be somewhere in the middle and then the third one i forget what it's called that one is probably going to be super the skulls right that's probably going to be like i i don't know if, if he goes through with it if he goes through with it that's the question do you think he's going to go through with I'd, that? I'd be pr- I'd be pretty surprised if he didn't at this point now because he he took the whole of 2016 off. Um I I don't know. And, and like like listen, let, let me let me put it this way, yeah. When when Kendrick releases an album, it's an event and people are talking about it for days, weeks, months before, yeah, and after. With, with Lupe, with Drogas Light, who was talking about it? It came and it came like and went so quickly. Yeah. Now, okay, Drogas could be completely different. Yeah, because it it might it won't be the light version. But again, it's patronizing. This is saying, oh, okay, I think this is what the kids are listening to or whatever. Yeah, he should be making much more authentic. Here's the thing. Music Here's the thing that. with Lupe. If Lupe would stick to his gun and just make quality music for for lasers and food and liquor too, and didn't and, and, and just stayed true to his guns. It would still be an event for the right people, you know. If Lupe's if Lupe's output stay consistent, peop, the the diehard fans and people who love rap will be will, will be shouting from the towers in the Lupe album. Maybe he maybe he can't get the Jay Z numbers. He's not going to get the Jay Z numbers, but he, it'll still be an event if the quality level still was consistent. It goes back to that fifty fifty problem that he has. It's like which Lupe which Lupe are you going to get? Are you going to get the are you going to get the sophisticated Lupe that we all that that rap fans like true rap fans? Not say true rap fans because I'm just true rap fans. That rap fans who appreciate that kind of style will will shock on the rooftops because people what, when Tessa Dual and Youth came out, Lupe Lupe fans were screaming from the, the tower right there. But what hurt Lupe was the two albums that came before that because people got burnt because of the first two albums. So he 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 siphoned off his fan base the last two albums. So by the time Tessa Youth came out, it was almost too little too late for some fans. Even though like people like you or me, for to different degrees, love the album or like the album. And I think people got because so many people were disappointed. So many Lupe fans were heartbroken over um, lasers. And then when it, when Food and Liquor Two came out, which is which is technically not a bad album, it just wasn't up to par with the legendary Food and Liquor and the Cool that people like talk. Because when you when, you, when people talk about Food and Liquor and the Cool to this day, it's still like in like hushed, reverent tones. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 But when you talk about when you talk about lasers and Food and Liquor Two, you're like. Uh, and then you talk about Tetsuo Youth, the people who actually, the, the people who appreciate Blue Bay after they gave it to it, they think it's a great album. And then the people who, and there's some people who probably never gave it a shot because they were done with Lupe after two albums. So, he put himself in the position. And right, Drogish Light, or whatever that album was called, should have been more of a cool than a Tetsuo Youth. He should have kind of balanced it out to that level. Not to go to this trap shit. Like, he should have just continued on with the music he was using in Tetsuo and Youth. And just simp- and like and like and like like tweak the tweak the uh, tweak the lyricism to it's a little bit more accessible, but still keeping the complexity like the cool. I think I think if he maintained albums like the cool from here on end, he'd be fine. Uh, I I completely agree, and I think the thing is is that like what's wrong with the way that Nas did it? You know, if if Lupe was the new Nas, yeah, then. Nas is a, an incredibly intelligent person, like hyper intelligent. The guy reads fucking God knows what. His <laughs> lyricism is is un, you know unparalleled in many respects, and every Nas album, for better or worse, has been an event. Yeah, certainly like since Stillmatic anyway. Um, uh, whereas Lupe's, this is not the case. Yeah, and and I'm going to say this. This is exactly so. This is exactly the same sort of thing I say to my brother, is that intelligence only gets you so far in life. Yeah, my like my brother's incredibly intelligent. Went to Oxford. This that blah blah. Yeah, but but at some point, okay, you can't apply that to everything else. No. Yeah, you have to have. There are different types of intelligence. You have emotional intelligence. You have this. You have that. Blah blah blah. And and this is what I don't think Lupe gets. And okay. I completely understand that if he releases these three albums as as what he wants to do and it ends up working as he wants, yeah, then fine. But it still doesn't mean that Drogus Light had served its purpose properly because if you release an album, it should be an album that you're putting out to the best of your abilities, which is authentic to who you are and you should enjoy making it and it should be a good representation of who you are, yeah. Now, 
Drogas Light is not a good representation of Lupe Fiasco in any way, shape, or form. I don't think so. There's very few songs in there. That, now, now there, are, there are good songs. It's a good, consistent album, but it's not representative. It's fake, man. I'm sorry, but it's fake <laughs> as fuck. Yeah, it is. Yeah. If we're gonna if we're gonna take it to the logical conclusion, it's fake as fuck and it's patronizing. After Tattoo and Youth, I, after Tattoo and Youth, especially. The thing is, if you're gonna say now, this is us projecting onto Lupe, yeah. But we are projecting, saying, okay, Tattoo and Youth is Lupe. Yeah, he might turn around and say, "Well, actually, do you know what? You know, you're actually you're patronizing me. You know, you're you're putting me in a box that you think I should do. Yeah, uh, that I should only make music like that. Yeah, I am more of a rounded person than that. But again, this is the point: is that okay? Make make a genuinely rounded album like you used to fucking make. Yes, <laughs> you know, like the cool. You like did it cool. already. Yeah. yeah, like the cool. The cool is a rounded album. I mean, Jesus, you even have like a club hit on that. I mean, like an underground club hit, like high definition. You have a radio hit, Superstar. You have incredibly deep yes. things like The Coolest or whatever. You have mind-bending lyricism, like Go Go Gadget Flow. You have all these kind of... You don't, have to, follow, you don't, you don't of, have to follow the trap trend. You don't have to follow the trap trend. You could do your... Exactly. Exactly. It just... It's gonna just cut. because it's relevant now, it, it, it's hurt the relevancy of the album in the long exactly. term. Exactly. And you're completely right that if you, just can, if you just stay consistent and true to who he was and kept doing it and doing it and doing it yeah. without thought of everyone else, especially now, he doesn't have to answer to anyone. Yeah. Because here's, yeah. here's the thing, because the, yeah. the music on the cool, it didn't follow any trends, so it doesn't sound dated. Same thing with the Tessalonian music music. It's not following any trends. It's, 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 it's basically... It, it, it's it's somewhat classical hip hop music in a sense. It doesn't follow any like any like trap trends except for maybe like the maybe like that one song with the nine guys on it. But even that one, the the chopper yeah, song, yeah. even that one still has like quality to it. But when I but this trap the trap sound is not going to last very long. It's going to be dated at some point right there. But like the song that the albums that stand at the time they don't follow the trend. They're they're within their time, but they're not beholden to the time in a sense. Like the like the blueprint like it it, it it's it, it's of that time. But it's also when you take that when you take the album outside of that time, it still works as an album because it doesn't sound dated. It just sounds like music that works for that thing. Similar thing with the black album. It's like they just have that they're not following any trends. They have a certain feel, which is which is of that time, but it's not linked to that time, in a sense. No, I was just gonna say that I, I sometimes people think I'm a bit harsh on MCs, but I think sometimes MCs need to know their place. Yeah, if you're talking about your average listener, now I'm not. I'm not saying everything comes down to the average listener, but basically, the average listener listens first to the music, second to the chorus, and third to the MC. Yeah, that's just the way it goes, right? Now, okay, you and I might be different. You know, the Lupe fanatics might be different. Yeah, fine, but. But your average person out there, and and the thing is, is that Drogas Light is supposed to be for your quote unquote average listener. Yeah, this is who it's targeting, and it doesn't work well enough. You know, it doesn't. So it's kind of like, okay, you think you're so clever, then why hasn't it worked properly? Exactly. <laughs> you know? and, and and like you know that he did that review of his own album, blah 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 blah. I gave it like a seven out of ten, and and whatever whatever. But again, if you're making an album and you know full well it's a 7 out of 10, then why make surely it? you shouldn't have... Yeah, yeah, why make it? Surely you know that you shouldn't have put it out. I, I don't know. Maybe we're being harsh, and, and, and maybe in a year's time, he would have released the other two, and it all makes perfect sense as this amazing triple album, and it's gone back to the heights of the highest high. Yeah, fine, maybe, but I very much doubt it. Yeah. You know. no, it's the, the only problem, like I said, I agree with that. Like I said, if Lupe wants to make money, he wants to make money. And I, and I don't be holding to that. Like, you got to make money, and I get that. And I get that's where it is, and I can't judge that. But I think the problem is, is the problem with Lupe and Lupe diehard fans is, is Lupe diehard fans know what he's capable of. That's the problem. And like I said, it, 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 now is that now that may be more of a Lupe fans problem than Lupe. Because Lupe doesn't Lupe doesn't own no doesn't own anybody jack shit. If you want to break it down no. at the end of the day, he doesn't. But because of how it's crazy, because of how Lupe came out and how he was revered and how skill level was, his diehard core fans don't want anything less than anything less than complex lyr- lyrical they 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 want they want they want sophisticated storytelling. They want complex complex lyricism and flows. They that's the stuff they want. They don't want the 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 average shit from Lupe. And and, and if you want to break it down and do the best defense, then that's our problem because he doesn't want to do that. Evidently, he doesn't want to do that. If he doesn't want to do that, then he doesn't do that. But he has to. But at the same time, as an artist, and I'm an artist too, 
you have you you have to have your you have to have your ear to your ground to your fans. You have to understand what your fans want from you. And not saying you give them what they want, but you have to understand that if you deviate from here, you're going to hear shit. That's the if you're going to be an artist and you want to take a detour, and you know your fans looking for certain things, you're like, you know what? I understand my fans want me to be this, but I'm gonna go this route. But you can't get mad at your fans because you know what they wanted. And sometimes, and like I said, you don't. As artists, you shouldn't give your fans all the time what they want. You shouldn't give them what they want. But if you're going, if if you're if if you if you went down this road and the fans went down this road with you, and you make a detour, then you have to be able to accept as an artist that your fans are not gonna go along. Some of your fans may not go along with you on that road. That's the gift and the curse of of making those detours. You're not promised those fans. You're not promised that your fans are going to follow you all the way to the end. You're just not. Even if you and it's getting the curse because even if you do stay along the same path and you give the fans what they want, they may not stay with you anyway either because they might get tired of you doing the same shit every day too. It's like it's very precarious being an artist. Like like it's almost like, but it's almost like anybody who works a job that is is dependent on the public's perception of you. It's like you don't know when it's gonna blow. You can you can you can be the hottest shit. And then next, next thing you know, the whole entire cultural thing changes, and overnight you're outdated. Look at look at the look at the hair metal bands that came out in the '80s. They're all those rock and roll bands that the Poisons and the thing. Guns N' Roses came out and made them irrelevant. And then Nirvana made Guns N' Roses irrelevant. And that was with the span of you saying they it's like with a span of like four or five yeah. years. It's crazy how that happens. You can you, you can be the trendsetter, but for only so long. And I think that's what happened to Lupe. I think Lupe had two albums where they were great. And he didn't quite cross into mainstream. Then he made an album that was mainstream, but he lost his his diehard fans. And then he got he got older, and a new generation came in. And then by the time Fruit Liquor Two came out, he whatever happened, he wasn't able to keep the fans of Lasers, and he wasn't able to keep the fans of the first two albums. So he was like out of drift. And by the time he came out with Tattoo and Youth, some of his fans came back. And the other ones who got burnt by the other two times never came back. And this is where he's at right now. And this is where he's at with Drogas. And like I said, I feel bad for him because like I, said, I don't know him as a person, but I know as an artist it's got to be frustrating that you, you don't know who to please. You want to you make money and be successful, but you don't know who to please. Are you trying to please the mainstream? Are you trying to please your, main, your hardcore fans? And how can you please them both? I mean, that's a tough spot to be in for anybody, I guess. But this is the, but this is my point, right? And you you hit the nail on the head. Is that okay? I, I've got two more points before I think maybe we, we should. Just, I, I'm done um, with 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 this. But okay. So my first point is you said he doesn't owe any anyone shit. Yeah. You know what? You, you're wrong because he owes himself. He owes himself. He should answer to himself. Everyone else, you're right. Yeah, but he should answer to himself ultimately. Ergo, why make music that? you don't really want to make yeah just because you think it's going to attain i mean he's now got, he's now doing it through his own record label he really doesn't need to do this kind of shit yeah he really absolutely doesn't and and even if he even if he thinks he does then do it better yeah you're better than drogas light put it that way you know so it's it's kind of like that's what frustrates me a bit and the second point is that you're so right i mean jesus like <laughs> with with your 80s rock and like you know the being made relevant by guns and roses who are made relevant and and you know who's making who's making lupe irrelevant for a lot of people is someone like ken yeah yeah it, it's that he has come along and so there's a whole generation of people who don't really care about lupe fiesta yeah and why should they you know because there's, there's so many other artists and the and you've got someone like kendrick who's just functioning on almost every cylinder yeah and 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 then you've got lupe who's putting out drogas light <laughs> yeah know? yeah so uh, frame it like that and then why should people care i'm sorry but why should they i agree i agree yeah um i mean that that's that's pretty much all i've got to say but uh listen we love i lupe. think we should end it on a happy note yeah. end it on a happy note and say look lupe we are huge lupe fans yeah. we love the guy yeah we absolutely love the guy yeah. it's just any Lupe fan out there has probably had these internal battles within themselves. <laughs> you know, you, you've got that. You've got that. That little gif of you know Kermit coming up and then facing himself with the hoodie on. You know, like that's what it's like being a Lupe fan. Like it's like that being a Nas fan as well. In fairness, yeah, it really is. Lupe yeah. has a Lupe has a rare a rare fan base that many fan many people who are, have fans don't have. Is that he has a core fan base that cares about what he does. And they want him to do well. Yes. They want to see him win. They don't want to see Lupe lose. 
None of none of his Dara fans want to see Lupe Luke. They want they want Lupe to win so much so they can so, so they can brag about. It. They want to wear the Lupe Fiasco T shirts. Go look, that's my that's that's my bro. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like you you want to, you want to say this is why this guy is one of the greatest rappers ever. Like you people Lupe's fans want to be able to come out there and say that and say okay. You can't argue that he's the he's one of the greatest rappers because he's consistent. He's on blah blah blah, and every time you hear like something that's not as consistent, then Lupe fans goes fuck man. I want to defend you, but I can't defend you on this album. I want to defend you, and that's what Lupe fans want. They want to be able to defend their boy, but I think Lupe is in conflict with himself. For whatever he wants, like I said, Lupe can make a healthy career if he manages. I, I think the thing with Lupe at his career right now is he can. If, I think if he managed and, and branded himself correctly. He could be okay. He could be all right and be good. But don't chase the brass ring anymore. The brass ring is not going to be there for you. Jay-Z can't even grasp the brass ring now. He tried with Magna Carta Holy Grail. He got hot for like two <laughs> weeks and then he went away. If Jay-Z can't do it. Yeah. 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 So just, 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 just use your skills and you make your money and you tour with the right people and you build up. You build, build a, build a, build a FNF volume too. Build up like, a, like, 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 um, like mentor some young ones. And bring them up, and then have them go and go. Wow, Lupe brought us up right here, and blah, blah blah. You can do that. Be a mentor while you still putting out your quality albums. Maybe those albums may not be at the top of the charts, but they'll still be a gold standard about for any rapper to aspire to reach. At the same time, you're like building up these new kids instead of you trying to be the relevant one. You can be relevant by bringing up relevant artists. You know what I'm trying to say, Lupe has a lot to teach new rappers and new hip hop artists. He could teach them a whole lot of shit. Well, maybe that's his plan. Listen, yeah. I mean, we, we don't know what his plan exactly, is with yeah. these three albums. Uh-huh. Like, it, I mean, he always says after every fucking album, oh, I'm going to quit, I'm going to quit. Mm-hmm. So, you know, forgive me if the boy who cried wolf doesn't <laughs> quite cut it with us. Yeah. You know? But he's still quite young. You know, he's only 35 at yeah. this point. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he could easily do this for another five, maybe ten years. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and, then, and then, like you said, just sort of gradually disseminate his legacy through other artists yes. and mentor them properly and, and be the record label boss that that he want he could have been after the call yeah. you know yeah. i mean he really he really was starting to do a great he great was pulling a lot of quality point. people up there but i guess whatever happened with atlantic yeah. and stuff like that i mean yeah because i mean because the record business is is difficult to, to, to navigate i i mean that can't be denied in all of this so i mean we're, yeah. we're looking at it from the outside looking in so god knows how much navigation that he had to navigate it's not easy for any of them. For anybody to even have a, a, a career and like that, Lupe, hey, man, I tried to be active for 10 years, didn't work out for me, so Lupe succeeded far more than I did, so I can't talk too much shit. He's still, I mean, he's still touring. People still going to see him tour, so I can't really talk. I mean, he accomplished that. You know what I'm saying? He still has people come to see him. He's still releasing records, even though they may not be at records that I may not enjoy all the time. He still achieved that goal. That's something to be said for that, you know? So... Yeah, I, I've got the feeling that I hope anyway mm. that okay, Drogus will be again a little bit of this convoluted Lupinus, and then Skulls will just be him. Yes, like a, like a, he'll release like Skulls will just be like the cool. Or he said he said he wanted to do whatever. the cool too. He said he wanted to do the cool too. I was like, holy shit, you gonna do the cool too? What the fuck? Oh my god! But then I then he probably thought about how that was gonna work, so he kind of backed off from that. You know, I can't throw it out of the air again. I can't. Do yeah, that yeah. But but I would happily trade in these three albums, this trilogy this year, whatever whatever happens. I would just I would just trade it in for one album a year from him when he's just functioning at peak performance. Yes, yeah, and he has it. He's still and got and it's, it. There doesn't have to be like an underlying concept. I would just take ten albums from uh, ten singles. Ten singles, gotcha. Oh, sorry, gotcha. ten ten songs on an album. Okay, where he's just functioning his best ten songs every year. Put it on an album, and I would take that for the next five years. Yeah. Fuck all this other shit. I would just take that. You That's know, good. If I'm honest. That's good. Um, but, but you know, he listen, he's got to do what he's got to do. He's a frustrating figure to follow. And you're right. We want him to succeed. Yeah. Uh, but it's incredibly frustrating to watch him. It's probably how my parents looked at me when I was growing up. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> like, what is he it doing? It must have been what so frustrating doing? to me, my parents. What is he doing? Yeah. This kid is so clever. What the fuck is he doing? And, and that's how we look at Lupe sometimes. <laughs> Nah, he's one of my favorite artists of all time. So that's, I mean, that's how it is for me. And there's not many artists I put on that, that in, in, in like that top 50 category. It's not easy to get in my top 50 and he's easily in there. So that's, just for, that's yeah. just how I feel about it. Like I said, he made three of my favorite albums of all time ever. And like I said, it, it, and, I, and like for me, like he's, like for me, if, if Johnny Mitchell's my favorite lyricist, like he's very close to there for me. Like I, I'm not very impressed by a lot of lyricists, and like he's one of those guys. 
that if, if you're talking about lyricists, he's in my per, he's in my personal top ten when he's at when he's firing all cylinders when he's firing all cylinders for me personally. So that's that's a high mark from from me. I could say. Can't say fairer than that. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, I think we should probably wrap it up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Unless we're going to make this like a trilogy uh, <laughs> of like our hour, hour well, I will say, this, this, this is the longest thing we've done since MIA and the Marvel stuff. I think this is the longest one we did since those. Yeah, yeah actually, he the, the he M&M one went, M&M, went long yeah, as well. Yeah. The M&M, yeah, that was around similar kind of length. But this, um, this goes... But this, Lupe deserves yes, it. We love Lupe. Yeah, exactly. deserves it, you know? I couldn't give Lupe an hour, yeah. man. I had to give more an hour. There's no way. Yeah, we had to. We had to. Awesome. All right, so we have any final words or we said everything enough we need to get out of here? Well, I, I think what we should do is come back in a year or, or or like at the end of this year. If he's released his next two albums, then we'll come back and just sort of review what, what that trilogy is. But yeah. outside of that, I don't, I, I don't really have too much else. To okay. I think we said everything we need to say. I think so. All right. Well, that was a fun one. Yeah. And uh, Lupe, <laughs> if you're listening... <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> we got we got a bit think PC at times, yeah. but you know, you, you inspire us to, exactly. to these things. You inspire me. I'll All say right. this. I'll say one more thing. You inspire me to be a better writer. So that's not that that's something there. So thanks. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. All right. Well, my name is Jessel. Answer sure. All right. Peace. Peace out.